May the 20th, following the select board meeting to order. First item, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Two. Uh, one, uh, buyout application for wood, Woodward property, 379 Lower Main Street West. Down here. Is that a time sensitive item? Uh, the property owner, I didn't know this, informed me that June 21st is the absolute deadline for getting applications in. I just found that out today. And so he would like to rush it through rather than risk having a canceled meeting or something in the future. One of the select board's wishes, I, I like it when Scott's here, though. We haven't denied an application yet, but I know of. Been a hundred year plus in his life, but. I'm I'm perfectly good, but is there anybody else that we're together? That's the only one. I'm going to do a front porch forum post tonight and just say, hey, it's now or never. Okay. It's game time. Okay. What's the other one, Tom? Uh, the other one is uh, to sign or delegation of signature for we got our property and casualty uh, payment, the confirmed payment. So we I submitted last week the final project for the building, the contents, the records, and the time to put it all together. And so it's for we'll get a check mailed on Friday for $235,186. But we just need to sign it. Or delegate to the trip already. That came today as well. Okay. Any others from the board? I don't believe uh, that we were. Uh, yes, I was going to say we were tendered a resignation letter and we should probably uh, consider accepting that. Um, I'll cut that right before select board issues and concerns. Any others? Do we need an executive session to discuss anything related to that, such as next steps or anything like that? That'd be important. We could certainly do all of it in public, except for anything that might be. Personal confidential. Yeah. Potential executive session addition. Any others? Okay. Uh, review of voices and orders. Those are going around. I believe everybody's had a chance to see them. Uh, we do have five minutes scheduled for public comment. Is there any public comment? Not this time. Oh, so you got nothing? Tonight. Tonight. <laughs> Just keep up the good work. Did you want to compliment me on my nice shirt? Nice shirt. Next item is select board issues and concerns. I have a couple. Moldy files in the vault and uh, moving downstairs. Okay. Where are we at with the moldy files? I think there was there's some drying equipment in there right now. Yeah. Ball, I believe. There's a uh, air scrubber which has the HEPA filter which cleans a bunch of things the air uh, that we purchased for the main room and that's now been moved into the vault. Uh, we're writing on Rosemary there as a custodian document. It's ultimately her decision. Um, I've already given Jason a heads up and I actually spoke with Susan today about assistance. So when she's ready, um, she can just point and shoot and then we'll have the loader and a 10 miller here to just just move everything quickly straight to consumers. We just got to wait for her to organize and she's on vacation right now. Well, there were files that were let down there wet after the point <laughs> and they were never taken out and dried out. And to me, that's unacceptable. That should have been done right from the cable. Yeah. Being that Rosemary is not the official, just like us, because we can't really force her into anything, could we take the temperature of the board and ask Rosemary to prioritize going through them with assistance from town employees? That 
pretty much all we can do is ask. Yeah, I mean, certainly she's you know, way above me for sure. Right. Yeah, and she's ultimately responsible for those. You know, whether she wants to keep them moldy or throw them out, that's you can't tell her to do any of that. Her ball. You know, there's a reason you don't have a combination. Um, so that's there's code there that are, you know you really have to respect. The other thing that I would be worried about is making sure that any cleanup is done with the health and safety of people cleaning it up in mind. And, you know, if Rosemary is saying she doesn't want to do that with our employees, I, I don't know. We probably didn't have a further conversation with her. I assume this is all female eligible still. Um, I believe so. Our DI is still open. We haven't closed it. And then uh, when I actually we weren't here, but we got the insurance letter for acceptance for our claim. They're going to, so we can accept payment. I did leave uh, records open, knowing that there's some coming back from storage and that it finds some more in here that will need to be thrown out and restored. Um, so we have, we did not cap that yet. So that section will be open. So anything we do, the materials and time put towards restoration and throwing them out will be recouped for our insurance company. And we ask that that be tried to be prioritized on other properties. Well, yeah, I think we all want to clean. Yep. Right. For sure. Well, well yes. Yeah. And <clears throat> now you have the potential mold problem. You know, and then you're going to have to wear a mask. Probably. You know, if that had been addressed right from the very beginning, we wouldn't have this problem today. And it's it's just wild for me. This is would never take care of. When she get back to the beach? next week. I'll be bringing to tomorrow. I'm just going to make a comment. I, I agree with you, Mike. It's an issue. I also think that hindsight, as they say, is 2020. And there was a lot of stuff going on. Right around that time. I, I understand nothing. I understand the whole the whole <laughs> drill. But the thing is that you know that the water came up fast. But you know, you could have been a call could have gone out. You know, I would have been more than happy to have come down and help move stuff if I'd received the call. But you know, I was no longer on the slide board. I didn't want to, I didn't feel as if that I wanted to be crying in the slide board's business, but I would have been more than happy to come down and pick up files off the floor. Yeah, and, and, other and, people. Wait a second. And I was the very first one here after the flood and the doors were unlocked. And I opened the doors to let the water out. And uh, <clears throat> I know you left quick, but the doors should have been locked. I know it's, all, it's water over the dam, so to speak. But if this ever happens again, we need a better, a better plan here on what we're going to do. And can this be a segue into downstairs? And Certainly can be there reason. Uh, after uh, hearing uh, the furniture was just ordered last week, uh, this talk is six to eight weeks before the furniture comes. Uh, that's going to be a year uh, that we've been fiddling around upstairs. You know, I would I would like to see everything move downstairs right now, starting tomorrow, and then when the new stuff comes in, you can do a slot. But it's ridiculous that we're still up here. In almost a year, we should be downstairs. The office should be downstairs. This should be open for meetings, and the seniors should have their spot in the back. So, if, they, if it was up to me, they would start moving stuff downstairs. Down the building. Again, is that Rosemary's call? I mean, it's her building, it's her office. Our call to tell Rosemary what to do. You guys tell me. I don't know that we can give her, you know, a, a directive. We can, as we did with the, the documents, say we would like this to be prioritized. I will also say that it would be more disruptive to town business to ask them to set everything up downstairs and then 
do a swap in six to eight weeks or whenever the furniture comes, um, I think that would lead to more time than comes in the sense of being disrupted. Um, you could move. I'll let you finish. I, I share your concerns and, you know, having spoken to some of the seniors at the last meeting and since, I share their concerns about them not having access to their space. Um, I think, yeah, I can speak for myself, but I think we have done everything we can to move this along as quickly as we can. Um, you weren't at that meeting, but, you know, I kind of said to, to the senior group, like, we're, we're dealing with FEMA. You know, I wish FEMA would move in fast. They're moving pretty fast. You know, from my understanding of how FEMA works, there's, you know, this has gone pretty quickly, uh, you know, relative to some past experiences. We are where we are because we experienced a, an act of God, you know, and, and there's nothing that any of us can do to prevent that. We can have the best laid plans, and in the moment when that's happening, we're going to forget details like locking the door on our way out. You know, I, I, I share your concerns about all of it, and we can all be hope to learn and do better next time. But you know, we are where we are. But you know, I, I still think that you could, if you had a desk sitting here and the new desk comes in, the old desk yeah, and you put the new desk. To me, I don't think that's foolish. Well, you think that you're welcome to make a motion. I'll make that motion right now. We go, yeah, I'll we start going down point tomorrow. Point. Excuse me, I will just do. Yeah, the village would have to be in on uh, that. Probably it would be in order. You, you can certainly make a motion on this time. I don't know if it's fine to be structured in terms of prioritizing something. So, what? Upon the approval of the village. And I'm sure they, you know, if, if they were that concerned about it as I can, they could have a special meeting and just discuss it. They could. There are certain things. Uh, it's crazy. It was what, what, 10 months ago? I don't think that they can actually move the phones down there and plug them in and go. I believe everything was rerouted up here. So moving desks down is great, but we wouldn't even be able to answer the phone back without coordination of other trades. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Well, it appears as if there's a number of wrenches already in the works. Really, this probably isn't going to happen. I don't know how much time you spent up here during the day, but the atmosphere is like pretty toxic practice. It's really hard, you know. Nobody really loves being up here. So to like move back down, I guess to take it apart, put it back together, like another disruption is already hard, you know. I think if we could just do it right once and have a pizza party with the furniture set up and like do something to like bring us together, because right now we're kind of tearing together apart. And we need we need more like together, especially upstairs. Yeah. I am getting a sense, and you can make a motion if you want. At the very least, I think it would be fair to contact the furniture company and tell them that select board would like them to invest as hard as they can. Is that fair? Yeah, that, that's a phone call or an email. Can you do any better? A week is better than. Two days is better. Anything is better. There's a pressure. That's a fair comment. It's at least time. Are there other issues and concerns on the board? I would just ask that we, uh, just don't people walk in afterwards. We go back and just open it for public comment if anyone has any. Do we have public comment for the Person, me? Who else came in? Did Rob? Rob? Well, I, 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 I just want to, yeah, if, if there's any public comment, we already are past that point, but I wanted to go back. I guess what is the same? You know, I still have one going. Okay, but nothing. Okay. All right. Nothing new. All right. Our next item is plan purchases. Uh, was there a breakdown in the packet? I believe the specific request was from Public Works to purchase uh, the remainder of the spending budget line for gravel minus minus five percent, which we had talked about in budgeting. 
And the other request was to spend the excavator rental. We don't have quotes. Does the board want a quote on the excavator rental? Do they want all that? Yeah. What are the board's wishes? We should. We would like to see quotes. They should. Sure. Yeah, it'd be nice to have quotes. And just by our current purchasing policy, I think we need a quote for that one. But what were you saying, Jane? I think this last five percent is five percent less than the remainder of the budget. That's my understanding, yeah. So, yeah, so the budget was the day, but that's not make sure that I could say right now. We have to go over that five percent. What are the board's wishes? Um, I'll make a motion to authorize uh, spending the remainder of the gravel budget uh, for June 30th. Minus 5%? Minus 5%. Okay, motion on the board. Is there a second? Okay. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Yes, yeah, have it. Uh, so, I, the temperature I'm getting from the board. Uh, it's come back at the first meeting in June with both sides to be the rentals. Yeah. Um, what would be the purpose of that? So we have a dollar figure authorizing to spend up. That's I mean, we have, we, we've already budgeted. We have done motions where we authorize on budget lines. I am just. That's the board's wishes. And you can make a motion if you want. I'm perfectly fine with trusting Jason to do the best job he can and to stay with 5% less than his allotted budget. Um, would you modify the motion so that way you could make basically two quotes? And as long as it goes with the lowest quote, then come back to the board on June 3rd, but then he can still get started with his online. That's fine. Right. You know, that way, that way, it was doing. That way he doesn't have to wait for the gets two calls. That's so bad. So who wants to structure that motion? <laughs> the, I'm taking back my second. It is original, so he crashed. We, we already voted. No, that one's already voted. We're, we're, we're already voted. This is the yeah. final. So I was just trying to pull up. I've seen the good. So, so I'm, I'm trying. I'm thinking about it. Oh, so Mark, you do it. You're I'll the one. I'll make a motion to um, authorize Jason to. Um, Utilize the remainder of his construction budget um, for excavator rental less five percent contingent on him receiving two kids. Perfect. Second. And going the lower one. And Perfect. actually. Second. That's good. Okay. Motion and second for the discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And the ayes have it. Uh, I did talk. It's not really planned purchases, it's income, uh, but I talked to the authorized somebody to sign the insurance certificate now. Oh, yeah. Run us down that one real quick. So we're we'll trying to make a motion or not. So this came in today. This is from uh VLPT. Um, last week I submitted the uh, insurance claim, just a full Full deposit of the contents downstairs, the building, construction, the loss, the labor, the record, the record restoration. You can see all this stuff in that. Um, so now they didn't even ask a single question and we're ready to go. I do have to sign it and we'll be able to check out this Friday for $235,186.74. Um, this check needs to be in camp. Press order on the furniture. Very ordered. Okay. And even if we had to pay for the furniture, we, we had to cash flow to pay for it. What are the board's wishes? Let me ask a question. Could that furniture have been ordered uh, earlier than when it was ordered? We had to wait till we were close. So the issue was we had to we had to produce contents. So I had to recreate what was downstairs without ever being downstairs. Right. With everything already being thrown away. And so but, I, you, but you just barely said that, that we could have paid for that and still got reimbursed. Right. And so here's here's really the hiccup is that we had to order our furniture based on what was lost. And so if we had ordered this furniture and I didn't produce the contents of a lot of true loss, we might have been on the hook for twenty thousand or thirty thousand. We had no idea what the, we knew. We already knew what we needed to put back, 
but we had to make the law equal or else we need to sustain with the flip back. And so once we got those numbers close enough that we were within 10%, the green light might be rosemary order again. But we just had to recreate that law first. Once we, otherwise, we would have been on the taxpayer's role for, the, for any difference. But some of that furniture could have been used again, couldn't it? It yeah. wasn't all really. The insurance company told us not to use any of it because of risk of health. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. always a hose and, uh, you know. We had move to uh, uh, exhibit to sign the letter. Second. Motion and a second for the discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Good job. Opposed? Yeah, I said I don't. This letter, what, what, how should I refer to it in the minutes? Uh, proof of loss. Sworn statement and proof of loss. You authorize Tom to sign it? Evan. Oh, Evan. Oh, okay. yes. That's all right. Andrew can go back. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Hang on. It's a. Uh, it is kind of funny though that they would say that because you can't um, clean stuff up with bleach, no problem at all. Disinfect it on it. Our next item actually bleach is a bit. It's the skate. Yeah. Lysol then. You like Lysol better? Right. This we don't need that. All right. But we're taking some Uh our next item is the skate park committee yep. that is here to give a report presentation talk to the board. Uh, this is Something we talked about in our first work session meeting about getting communication with the community and the board back together. And Casey is the first one to take on that honor, really. Well, batter up then. Skater up. There you go. No, I don't think so. I think this chair would be just fine. Okay. Now, did oh, all right. Um, Tom had organized this question or presentation into three parts current work, uh, what do we need for support, and dreams and visions for the coming month. So that's how uh, I've done it. And there's pictures, not too many numbers, a lot of words but I'm going to put the whole thing in a packet and send it to you guys, which you can have it or delete it. Your, your choice. Okay. Current work. We have three categories. The half-pipe construction starting June 10th. Um, and just to refresh anybody's memory, the, the, con the big concrete bowl, you know, it, it extends to the west towards Jeff with a grass berm around it. And it should take about three weeks to build, I think, three-ish, something like that. Uh, so there's that. Uh, a very small bit of work, but important, is that, uh, so that actually it's a FEMA repair, is replacing the damaged black uh, fence, chain link fence, property fence sections. Uh, and we've already trimmed tree branches the whole way down that fence line, which has really been needed for a long time on Ken Harvey's side with his blessing. Uh, those are the branches were pushing against the fence anyway, and you couldn't clean up back there. Um, so actually on green up day, I had some people come and we just went back there and cleaned up. So it's looking better. It looks very different than it did. Okay, next category is FEMA projects. And this is where we start with money. <clears throat> so far, the FEMA award for damage plus mitigation, which they are giving us because we are mitigating, uh, minus the 25% local match, which <clears throat> you know the state may kick in a little bit on that, but we don't know. Anyway, what they've recognized so far uh, to give us is around $137, a little over. Uh, and I'm, all the figures that I'm going to mention are minus the local match. 
Yeah. $137 or $137,000? Oh, did I forget? $10,000. That's fine. Continue. Yeah. It makes more sense. Okay. Sure. Thank you for catching that. Gotcha. I forgot yeah. to add $230 this after the 137 Okay. So, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, last October, their inspection omitted many items that they didn't know how to evaluate. Uh, Ron and I worked months to explain and document what these additional damages were, like the entire bike track. <laughs> uh, so they're now planning another inspection. We could get up to $40,900 for the damages if they acknowledge everything. And when and for mitigation, that would double to 81,800 addition, but we'll see, you know, it's a process. Um, so if they did improve everything, uh, approve everything, we would get awarded a total of $219,000 to do repairs and mitigations. Um, we estimate Spending maybe not eight nine thousand for actual repairs that we need to do between like fence and, and electricity, uh, and that would leave two hundred eleven thousand dollars for two mitigation projects. Not enough. Anyway, let's look at the projects. In context of the whole state park area here, we have um, an actually quite ambitious plan for a concrete park uh, extending basically mm, near the sheds that are there uh, down from, uh, here's the current and here's the extension that's already paid for. So it would surround and extend the concrete with a bunch of ramps. Um, and the project, and that and it would replace the wooden metal, you know, that's the mitigation. Um, the pump, uh, this proposed new pump track would replace the multiple trails of the current bike skills area that's in the meadow. And everything would be dirt. There would be no constructed wood features or you know rock formations or anything like that. Just dirt trails and rollers, berms like that. Um, and it would be a, maybe eleven hundred linear feet of things. So that would also free up this other southern area for taking away more material if down the road, the town wants to do that for some reason. Um, it just leaves it, leaves it open for, for doing that if need be. <laughs> okay. And, and to show you more specifically these things, Flash. And again, this this will be in a packet that can be emailed if any for what they want. Um, concrete rectangle, basically, current thing, and then the little half, the new uh, half pipe, and it just it, you know it's a rectangle ending in an an end piece that they can finish up on, basically, turn around and go back. And yeah, it's a, just a variety. It's a variety of ramps and features. How many square feet is that? Uh, about ten thousand. So it's ambitious. Um, yeah, you know, it's great. it's a lot of base. And they, um, what FEMA had said was, we don't want you going east at all into the meadow. Um, you can build on the area where the current uh, asphalt is. But go west if you're going to go, uh, you know, go out, go outward. So that's what we did. 
in case you said the mitigation there is just removing the like wood and metal features. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's no plans to remove any fill there. To what now? Like remove any other material from that? No, I mean, they, when you, whatever you add, you have to take away yeah. the, the same amount. So there's that. But again, yeah. not, not so far. Right. I mean, with, you know, some new uh, requirement emerges, then we would go, go with that. So the plan would be to include where the Friday cubic foot of fill you put in and removing a cubic foot of fill mm -hmm. somewhere in the yeah. plan. Yeah. Sure. Not exempt exactly from any floodplain permit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, for the structures. Right. It was, the idea was that a flood that goes away, people stay connected. Yeah, we're even thinking of we've got sort of a, a, a sketch scheme for um having garbage cans put in sort of wells <laughs> or you know enclosed yeah uh, somehow or other. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um and th this is a just a bigger sketch of showing, you know, again, here's the concrete, here's the garden, and so I guess you know, trails would really the trail could run like that. And that's how it looks on a bigger picture. That would free up the lower half. Oh, uh, upper half. Um, There's a knot break on my neck. Oh, right. It would free up the lower yeah. section. It would be here. Up to what I would call And when you're saying lower section, you're saying close to it. Well, the closer, closer to the bottom of Romero Drive. Here's, um, here's the concrete bowl. And Western Road and Route 15 up here. So it would be in this area. And the lower section, you know, the top oh, grass to lower it or whatever. Below that bottom road, it has what flood capacity. Mm -hmm. it, There's a road right there, right yeah. there. Below that is what I assume Evan is talking about, the lower section. Oh, no, that's what one. I was talking about that. Right there. Okay. And here you could take away. The idea was to consolidate it all. So yeah. It doesn't mess up any other potential. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it would remove all the woods, wood and log things that show up. Yeah. It, well, they're gone. Yeah, they're gone now anyway. Most of them. All right. Mm -hmm. So back to text. Um, okay, so that's two things, you know, half pipe FEMA stuff. Um, interestingly, the pump track would cost less to build than to repair the entire uh, bike track. <laughs> that, actually, that's not, not too surprising. Um, oh, and cost-wise, sorry, that uh, big concrete area and all the ramps, if we built the ambitious plan that we put down because that was the direction to, to do, to put down your dream, right? And then we'll go from there. Um, cost range for that, construction only was 436,000 to 500,000. That doesn't include permits, tree work, any cost for moving the water line, et cetera. Um, and in fact, the water line is gonna start the moving the water line is going to start this week, thanks to a broken yard hydrant, right? and um, <coughs> and also to Jason Whitehill's good idea of if we're going to have to move it in two years and we have to dig now, let's do it all, get it done. Uh, so and he wants, in fact, to really get it done like quickly. So he. He and the the crew and um, Nate, <coughs> excuse me, and Nate uh, Brigham are gonna hit it this week. Okay. Anyway, so clearly there's a big money gap between even if we've got, even if we had two hundred eleven thousand dollars, adjustments will need to be made and, and other. Okay, so the third area that we're working on 
is what I would call committee is what I called committee and recreation coordinator collaboration. Um, we had already begun working with Dean to shift some administrative work to him, starting with director's orders. He was going to start that in July. Uh, given the growth of the park and what's needed to run and maintain it properly, we need more administrative collaboration and oversight uh, with the recreation coordinator. Um, and I had hoped to step down as chair next July, taking a smaller role uh, on the committee and adjusting the workload as an ongoing agenda item. So the next question was, what do we need for support? For the half pipe and construction, we would need and a uh, recreation coordinator, probably, you know, so in some proportion of time. <clears throat> for the field projects, for the money work, I mean, Ron, Ron is the guy, our liaison. And uh, he, we're working to, you know, we worked for months to work on getting this money that is really due to us. And they are at least coming back to inspect again. So, um, and as I said before, we obviously have, we'll get enough money to cover those little repairs that we need to do. Uh, but FEMA funds will not cover the two mitigation projects as shown. Uh, we would need Tom's guidance with the next steps. For starters, uh, we want Tom to meet our committee uh, and hope that you could come to the June 15th. Um, and we'll get guidance you know, and feedback from all of you guys to align uh, to what ends up being our real plans for those two areas uh, with overall town development. Uh, we already have the resources to ad adapt and make changes to those plans. We don't, you know, that's all stuff we work with people and so forth we work with committee members too. So that that we can do, but we need it needs to be integrated with everything else. Uh, to do and as in the area of committee work and recreation coordinator collaboration, um we need more support from a rec coordinator than was possible in the current part-time position. Um, that's part of a larger discussion that probably will start soon in, with Tom and, and others. <clears throat> for dreams and visions for the coming months, I dream of work and plans that are not limited and dominated by flood recovery. <laughs> that is my dream. <laughs> Uh, and I hope that in, frankly, 2025, that will happen. I, I, it's not happening yet. And I don't see it over the summer. Uh, we really have the same vision for the park as we did in 1997 when Eric, he, Osgood, identified that whole this whole parcel for a potential recreation area after the 1996 flood. Um, a broad citizen survey chose biking and skateboarding as two activities that should happen there in this parcel. Um, the whole parcel, just as a reminder, of course, the whole parcel, oh, well, there it is. It goes all the way to the river. You know, we're just this portion. We've got conservation and gardening. <clears throat> wetlands and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, so the, yeah, they, the citizen survey identified biking and skateboarding, chose biking and skateboarding as priority activities. Uh, we all want an area that's clean and safe, fun for everyone, and promotes substance-free recreation. That's a tough goal. Uh, but we have other tough challenges. Uh, the park has grown, so the challenges, and honestly, tonight <clears throat> is not 
the night that I can identify specific future goals and visions because <clears throat> we're we're just buried with recovery work. Um, I mean, this is what I got. <clears throat> In reality, uh, post-flood development or rebuilding is the big new gear that we all have to work with. Um, and that's just different from before. So I believe that the town and all of the committees and citizens will need more time and good processes to identify needs, dreams, visions, and to identify what resources the town does or doesn't have to meet them. And I appreciate this opportunity as part of a good process. Oh, thank you for coming in. Uh, you did say that you could email yep. that information. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to put it into one you file. Can email to the board. Yeah. One thing I'd like to point out in case when I first started, Casey was looking at about $30,000. It was $35,000 with the repairs and the initial assessment or something for the payment section. And then it Oh, they, yeah. in their, in their view. Because what Casey went back to the board and uh, really fought and pushed really hard. And that brought that 35, 39,000 up to 220. So like, that's, that's all there. You know, that's really. Well, really yeah. and it, it just, it, it was unfortunate. They, they didn't, when they were here the afternoon that they were there, they just said, we don't know what we're looking at. So they identified only a portion. Yes. And what they didn't say in the report, uh, we admitted a lot. That's the that's been the tough thing. So, but hopefully, you know, they're coming back or we'll do drones or video or something. Mm -hmm. You know, but they're we're talking, so we're hopeful. Does um, the yes. have any questions or I was just gonna, just gonna ask, um, have you had conversations with Randall about um, potential recreation related money streams? Not yet, um, because honestly, until we see what FEMA comes up with, um, <clears throat> then we'll have the, and, and how we adjust plans, then, then we'll talk. We have gotten some help from the uh, Community Foundation already, uh, because there was, you know, six, five, six thousand dollars, something like that gap between what the town League of Cities and Towns insurance paid for shed contents. Uh, for the group we actually lost. They very kindly did that. So but we'll see. It's yeah, so the, the bigger discussions Randall would definitely be part of. Yeah. Getting well, he might be able to connect. There's also conversations mm -hmm. happening on the rail trail committee mm -hmm. surrounding paths and, and you know different connectors in town and that might be something that we can right. bring two projects together. Right. Um, All right. Okay. I know you just said that you don't this isn't finalized yet, <clears throat> but do you have any sense of what the town chair is going to be for any of these events. For FEMA? No, for any of these projects. Yeah, well, it would depend on what it was. Um, I mean... Eventually, you will be probably looking for some money from the town? Uh, probably. I mean, the, the grants I'm most familiar with, um, the Community Foundation doesn't have a local match for most of their grants, but the state's recreational development grant uh requires they're they're just a 50 straight 50 50. Right. you have to have that money in the so you're saying but, there's potential there, oh right. yeah there's always potential right but that, i mean it's it's early days yeah we you know we 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 know that everyone's allergic to match <laughs> these are just ballpark figures of what it would cost yeah. and yeah. Yeah, like, like you said they're kind of big dreams right yeah <laughs> what do you got done so i think a couple of things yeah. um, you you mentioned the need for the possibility of more administrative services mm -hmm. for record i would probably have categorized that in the dream piece but mm. uh, okay. that's just me um but in that regard I, I understand that. I get that. Uh, my question to you is: You talked about the possibility of 
hoping to step down next year as chair. Mm -hmm. are, are we looking at a time, a point in time where it makes sense to combine the state park committee well, with that's, the committee? That's what we had been talking about with Dean. Um, we want to still remain a committee rather than being like a task force or whatever, just just because. Um, or you could even be a subcommittee or director. Something. I, but, something. But yeah, we, right. Um, yeah, there's that, there's the, I guess you'd call it the legal and or right. formal, formal bureaucratic designations. And there's also the reality of who does what. Um, and it does make sense to collaborate and streamline, um, obviously. So we're all for that. And the other piece of that question, you know, it, my own perspective on that is it would really make a lot of sense to look at recreation more globally. Oh, as yeah. A community. Oh, yeah. Um, and, it, you know, this, you guys have done fantastic work down there, but, you know, at some point in time, it, to me, at least, it makes some sense to think about that being a function of overall sure. recreation. Yeah. Maybe. And as I had said, whatever we think of, it all has to work in the town plan. Yeah. The, other, the other question I have, I just don't know the answer to, I know at one point in time, this the past, Larry School was going to be helping you guys out in your space. Oh, that... yeah. We have a formal memo of understanding between actually between the town and Laraway. And it's basically that we both want the park to succeed and that we will, you know, they, it is useful to them. Uh, it is useful to us. They are they're, they're having their students there and doing community work and or having, you know, being taught skills there. You know, that's great. That's what the park is for. And they they are very they are very much a community partner. They donated the case of apples to bring up the <clears throat> they they were gonna bring students to clean up, but then another thing became another project elsewhere it was dirtier, <laughs> needed more work. Uh, but no, there, they are, there are two, there's two Laraway uh, people on the committee, and there always is Laraway participation. Uh, and, the, and then Happy Lamar Valley is another community partner at this point that is to support desire for. Promoting drug substance free recreation. Sounds like an unhandling we have in the park. <clears throat> Any further questions? Okay. Thank you very much for coming in, Casey. Thanks, Casey Park. Good work. There's a, sub, there's a sub question here for the board. Yeah. Yeah. The concrete that you're, bringing, that you're planning on bringing in. When are you going to remove the dirt for that concrete and the concrete you put prior? Um, I don't, don't know. I imagine when construction would start. Yeah. I mean, because well, you have, I mean, you did there. remove the dirt, which I'm grateful for, that was brought in into the wetland. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, but yet the concrete structure that's there is supposed to also have equal dirt taken up. And that was, yeah. in, um, I, I, I guess that, that wasn't a requirement at the time, but, but anything we, we could easily do it. It's yeah. We have, we know the volume of these things, but we know the volume of these things only after they're built, and so there will be no dirt removed as a as a uh, for, uh, uh, as a forerunner in construction. Yeah. Uh, we have to in order to do to. We need to have the stuff built. Then we can do the cubic foot measurements and remove the soil based on that. And who's going to be doing the cubic foot measurements and doing all the? What's that? Who's going to be doing the cubic foot measurements and doing uh, one of they, our committee members and me? They, and actually, the CAD programs could yeah. have. You know, I I can tell you what cubic feet there are on what's proposed, but that's not what, what is going to happen. We don't know that yet. Is any of the fill down there not good to be used? 
No, it's all fine. Yeah, so it's off slope. Why do you have to bring in heat? Huh? So I know the gravel underneath. Oh, brilliant. Oh, back, oh, back runs the fill that's there to back fill the. Yeah. 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 Okay. Use what you've got. You don't have to bring any in and then haul it out. Right. And that's what you did with the bike trip. Move it. Move it. Done. That's what we were told that they did that with the bike trails. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I have one. I have another question for you, if I may. Uh, do you guys, in your in invitation to committees, are you going to looking for Tuesday night live to come in and present to you? So my next not? sub item was which committee does the board want to see next month? But I'd like to see every committee at least during the year. We kind of started a little late. Because oh, I understand. Right, right yeah. now, be perfect for Tuesday night live uh, beautification. Conservation. Yeah, I, I would like to make sure for TNL the sooner the better. Okay. You're right. advocating for TNL sooner than later. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, you want next meeting, Howard? What? You want next meeting? Hang on. I'm not there yet. Yeah. That's, it. That's your question, Charles. So, Casey, you said you wanted, you were concerned about getting away so that floods no longer matter. I'm uh, paraphrasing. Uh, no. But floods you, are going to always matter. What did you say about floods? Oh, no, I said uh, that dealing with floods, uh, you know, our town especially, that's the new gear that everything has to work with. So, and that's new. Okay. So, why expand in a flood zone when we have another field that's much higher up, that has mountains in the background that you get a very nice mountain bike track? Why not move up there? Well, those fields are pretty much bespoke for team sports, and there is the goal of having a small pump track up there too because of the rail trail. So it's kind of busy there. But secondly, and independent of that, is that um, if the, done right, um, and you, and you don't have things that are gonna float away and become debris, the kind of contouring that uh, a cement ramp series and, and or the dirt berms and stuff, uh, they actually reduce the force of flood, flood flow. Um, so it, this is accepted worldwide as, uh, a way of using recreation areas in flood zones. Um, LCPC has talked about this with us for a long time. So, and, you know, as long as you're not, I mean, as the rules say now, you can't add, if you're, if you're gonna add, you can't add to the mass, overall mass, but the contouring is help is actually helpful. Slows down the velocity of the wall. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Casey. Yeah, Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Lucy, the sub item is what would the board like, like, like to see next month? Oh, no, we have somebody out of the meeting. Who's that live that Tom had? A recommendation of the Planning Commission because the town wide plan is coming out. Um, or the conservation commission, also a reputation for the board's thoughts. Do you have any commission have any thoughts on the urgency of? Well, excuse me, we have a um, public hearing June 18th, 18th, I think, to take comments on the draft plan, after which we'll be submitting it to you. You can review and comment to the board. So maybe it would make sense to come in for that. Yeah. So we can't go very well with public comment. We've got to discuss it. So July, that yeah. would be an idea. Yeah. 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 Okay. We meet up. We uh, we meet uh, one Monday a month. It, it varies which Monday, because uh, we we're meeting it down at Blue's Joint. 
which is a great place to meet. I want you all to know. And the top is on our committee, so that works well. Um, uh, and so they're closed on Monday night. So uh, if, you have, if you have another work session in the middle of the week, it's the second Monday of the month. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I will make a note of that. This will be the 17th, it looks like. That's actually the third Monday. Yeah. yeah third, third, third Monday. Monday of the month. Second meeting. Second meeting. Our first meeting is the third. Our second meeting is the 17th. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, I can make that. Do you know how long this night life would be? Well, we've been at it 35 15 years. 15 minutes? Um, <laughs> Uh, then you want 35 minutes? No, no, <laughs> a minute for each year. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I mean, we'll just do a presentation. Be honest, right? Yeah. Just to touch base with you guys. So you went on how we're not spending any time on it. Okay. And then we'll really appreciate it. That's music to all the years. I know, as well. Yeah. I expect a band when I get it. I don't know what the You have to organize it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, would it be incredibly inappropriate to ask Community Oven at the same time as Susan Airline because they're very, I think, sort of watching that fourth dog? Yeah. But these are quite separate needs, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Well, we get along. The committee yeah. and I don't think the community have been different in the much. Which is right. here. So, Tom, you, yeah. you're comfortable it's with asking Susan Airline right. or oh, oh. Community Oven for July 17th? Right. Yeah. What about July? Yeah, you guys are July. We're meeting on the third first. Monday. Third Monday of July. Okay, 15th. Huh? 15th. Sure. <laughs> I'll have to look at my calendar. It is. 15th. July, July 1st is actually the first Monday. Great. Okay. That makes sense. Very nice. There's five, there's five Mondays. So we'll come and fix it. If you go with it, it's still on the board. Feel it. The next item for the board, and we're not running on time, but at the buyout application for class L road policy. Do you want to give us a rundown of that quick down? Yeah, so this um this is sort of the same one that's been kicking around, I think, for four years. Don't get me committed. No, buyout application. Buyout, sorry. So this is, um, we had an application come in. It's for 379 Lower Main Street West. Property owner name is Woodrow. Any relationship? It is Real close, aren't you? So I would, I would move to authorize town pre-approval or whatever we're following it of the application. So if you have to move forward, understanding that there is also a first filing deadline with FEMA. I'll leave this up to the chair where we're actually make two motions here. Um, I'm wondering if we shouldn't authorize, you know, either the chair and or the administrator to, since we have already pretty much decided that these are going to be pro forma approvals on town for these, that we just authorize somebody to sign off on of anything that comes in between them and the Let's keep it clean and do them separate. All right. So I will move to authorize uh, the, the town pre approval of the application. Second. Move on the floor and second to approval. Further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstaining? Did you get that one? You got aye. aye. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Four eyes, one of seven. Yeah, it's have it. Uh, wait a minute. I'm going to send that off. You're good. We authorized Tom to sign him anyway last, yeah, year, we last meeting. But yeah. This just came into the area, so just got it, not seeing this stuff. 
Uh, your second motion, Duncan. My second motion would be to authorize, let's, let's say, authorize Tom in consultation with Scott Meyer um, to approve any, any buyout application between now and the next meeting. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Sorry. Motion and second. Further discussion? I, I don't know if we have it. I think that it would be smart for maybe to put a blast out to the public about this debt. Well, he just said earlier he was going to go to the front porch. All right. You were there. I, I, I walked. That's right. You were there. Yeah. Okay. Any further further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Yeah, I have it. Now, um, last four roll policy. Oh. Uh, in the packet. Um, this came in on, uh, this is being worked for for now a couple of years, it's probably four years, I think. And Duncan made some final edits that we sent out to the board on Friday. And I went through and just, um, touched up all of our state aid and mileage. It's kind of reorganized a little bit so you can see the difference between town and village. Um, so we're going to have to do some, make sure that the mileage is miles that we're getting paid for, that the miles that we're taken care of. What do you mean by that? Make sure. Oh, because you know, it's really interesting. We have a town government and we have a village government. So the town is responsible for all the roads in the village, but are we getting our state reimbursement for the town and village mileage? Because on the state, they have a two separate municipalities, they have two separate matters. So roughly six, six some odd miles, six point four four yeah, on page one. Yeah. Yeah. And your concern <laughs> is that we may not be getting reimbursed for those in the village, and the village may be getting reimbursed, or they might not be getting reimbursed. They're, they're not. They're, they're definitely yeah. not getting reimbursed. So the same question is, are we getting? Because we're, we're responsible. Yeah, the money needs to come to the town, and it's significant. It's, you know, it's almost five thousand dollars for last two miles, and eighteen hundred dollars for last three miles. So. We're talking 10 grand. Yeah, we've been, yeah, yeah. there's six miles in the village. Right. Yeah. Also, that's class two. Yeah. 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 So that would be 30 grand. Well, yeah, possible. Yeah. yeah. Most of it's, there's only 1.6 miles. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the old guys. <laughs> Does the board have any comments on this version? I'd like to hear comments from those who did a lot of work on crafting all of this, whether they're happy with the finished product. I was going to ask for public comment after. Yeah. The board comment. But I do have a question on number seven of your packet. It says the cost of repair of these sections would be astronomical. We were talking about those sections. What is astronomical? Are you talking about this number? No, no. Talking, talking about the. Uh, oh, yeah. So that, right. um, okay. That's actually really part for um, this policy includes that. If you look under maintenance, it talks about meeting the requirements of the MRTP. Right. And so with that, it's going to be a juicy decision. So that those costs that we don't know yet are included in this policy. We have to have the policy to make sure we can make those decisions and cost. Look, like step one is getting the policy done, put the bed, and then step two is trying to take a survey of what condition our class four roads are in. Does that seem logical? But you just made a statement the cost yeah. of repair that these sections would be astronomical. So yeah. what, what is the fee? What is the, the cost? Uh, you're telling me you don't know, but you're just saying they're astronomical. Well, I went out to visit a few last week. Um, you know, I feel like it's sort of getting off fast. So it's not going to be ready. But uh, Cotton Hollow, when you head out to the Waterville side, uh, the river is running down the road. It's down the ledge. And you, the cut is probably four foot deep. We are that's considered a high priority road. And so we are obligated to repair that road to class four specs, even though there's no road existing. Um, we have a couple options. We could reclassify as a legal trail, leaving the right of way open. We can uh, reconfigure the road to where the ATV trail has put in onto the town property 
um, or we can uh, pay to fix it, you know, but all of those cost money, um, whether it's through hearing processes or whether it's through road repair, which is I imagine is extensive, or whether it's through the survey to reconfigure the location of the road. But those are hard decisions to come. And I think the point um, is that this policy, we need a policy like this in place so that those decisions become automatic. Um, I guess I'm going to throw this out here. I, I think class four roads are very important to the town. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> the previous um, discussion we had about the skate park, the board has a track record that they seem to have plenty of money for that skate park. But I don't think the board seems to find enough money for class four roads. I know that it is a budget item all the time, and it's always pushed back on the budget. And so uh, I think they should be more money for class four roads. They're, they're very important. Uh, I also believe that uh, if you have a good, decent road and you have property on that road, it increases the, the value of that property, which actually brings more tax revenue into the town. So uh, I think we should do all we can to maintain the class roads that we have, and that we should not just arbitrarily throw them up the trails so it gets us off the hook with the state. Uh, could we ask um, Paul to maybe weigh in or any member of the Planning Commission to weigh in on the conversation about classifying roads and trails if that's even you know, relevant right now? Well, I did ask it's, the question at the beginning. You wanted the board to uh, get our yeah, discussion so over with before we I, I do. I, yeah, my, take, my takeaway from Mike's comment is during budgeting, he would like the board to consider it. And this is about accepting the class four road policy. I do believe that Paul has sent the recommendations, past recommendations from the planning commission to the select board on the on the road three class box. And I'd love to have the conversation on reclassification, but it's a different one. So yes, when you talk, you can touch on it, Paul, but this is accepting the class four road policy and not reclassifying. Right. Understood. Right. <clears throat> Are there further comments from the board on the policy in front of us, or can we take you can take you first if you want? Paul. Believe it or not, I've got more. Don't believe it. Okay. So on, um, and this was pointed out to me by a member of the public. Under number four, maintenance by the panel. B one refers to uh, the, the next to last sentence says C section three, that should actually see, say C number two below. So section three was removed. And then the other thing that is strange and I don't quite understand, the copy that I have has a four, five, and six. Three's gone. So I don't know what happened to three, um, but this one does not have a four, five, and six. So I'm not sure, and I don't have my copy that has a four, five, and six. So uh, five and six under number four. Under under section Seven, four, main four, four, section section four. So there was a, a B. There was a B one, uh, two, and then four, five, and six. So. Three is gone. That's why I said it should refer to section to number two below, which is the criteria for evaluating work to be done on class four road. But in the version that I had, there was also a four, five, and six, and they are not in this draft that we have. I don't know if they're in the one that you have. Well, I just printed out you guys had it. So uh, I have your red line copy here also. Mm -hmm. We don't have the right one. Mm, that's not in the. It's in the red line version. Is it? Yeah. Is it? And, and are four, five, and six still there in the red line version, or when they struck it out? Still there. Maybe at that. You know. 
We had that one last week. So three is the permits required. That got taken out because we changed the change the permit requirements so that you could do basic maintenance and stuff line without need of a permit. So that got addressed in another section. That's why three is gone. But four was the physical characteristic. I'm sorry for me to read that. The physical characteristics, width and drainage, and general use of the highway shall be maintained unless otherwise permitted by the select board. Five stone walls can provide valuable historic markers to the establishment of the location of rights of way and shall not be removed without the written consent of the select board. And six, a surety damage bond or deposit may be required by the town in conjunction with this right of way permit, right of -way permit for repairs, alterations, and construction or use of the highway which may be deemed to cause a highly high chance of causing damage to said highway. So those, those I think, were intended to still be in there, and they're not in this area. Yeah, and the red line that came through, I pulled it up, not in the one that you they sent out. It's not in there at all? Yeah, I like just got pulled out of the email. So that must have been probably maybe in the accept approval. You know, I, approve yeah. I went through like a rocket fire. But it's probably where I my gas is going to work out. Yeah. But just right here, I don't see it on. It, so that's on the server, probably the original one. Yeah, that's on my. That's on, I, I, part of my problem is I have saved multiple drafts of this and I've dated them. Okay. I may have sent you the work. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so Duncan, I, are you referring to the ones that were posted as part of the packet on the Posting for the meeting tonight? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's missing section. Right. Yeah. yeah it's missing I, I stuff. think the one that I sent that? to you, Daryl, might have had a four, five, and six. Does it? It does. Okay. And I think I printed both of them off. The one with your updated mileage from the posting yeah. the minutes. I yeah. think it's, you sure it's not there? I'm not seeing it. I'm listening to the it's copy. Not it. Yeah. Not it. It's not in the copy that we have, but if you've got it's a copy, on, of it, it's on the website. I got it from the website. Oh, like the under documents oh. policy. Yeah. I, no, it's no. from it's 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 in a your section. It was an attachment to your right. where to go. It's under send oh, email out to everybody. Oh, yeah, on maintenance. the warning for the yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. On the warning for the meeting. That's like like, oh, it is. Right. It's under it is. Where it is. We got moved. We got moved. We got moved to section six. So it's probably correct that it got taken out of four. And and put over in six and by others. Yeah, I don't know if it will look like I know it was supposed to be. Turns out I had to be okay. Yeah, My apologies. So I think I think it's good. And just just so people know, Daryl's one of the people I communicated with, and Daryl's dad. Um, they were. This policy was an issue for both Daryl and and Dean, um, and I also communicated with Paul. Uh, you know, during this process, so, uh, and Doug Moldy as well. So some of the changes that I made reflect things that you know Daryl had concerns and comments about. Anybody in the public have a question? Comment. Oh, we still haven't gone no. around the phone yet. That's right. I'm, All the raise my hand. Case. Would you like to speak, Paul? Right, I will. I think Paul, Paul and I are, actually, I'm going to start and Paul's going to make it nice. <laughs> I'm the bad copy. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a lot of time talking about money. And in the, in the Planning Commission's proposal, <clears throat> We had requirements for budgeting money. And if there was a surplus that didn't get spent on class four rooms, it would be reserved for future improvement, for future spending on class four rooms. You've got reserved funds for the skate park. You've got reserved funds for the, I believe, the Conservation Commission. I think you have reserved funds for, for the Historical Society. Class four roads, as I pointed out, are an important asset of the town. Probably as important, if not more important, than those other reserves. 
So we feel strongly that that we need to budget for it and either spend it or save it rather than have it go away every year. Second item. Dispute disputes over location of the, of the road. When a dispute arrives, I think it's incumbent on the town to be responsible for establishing where their right of way is. Remember, the government is a servant of the people, and not the other way around. So, if there's a dispute about the location of the road, it's it's incumbent on the town to establish where the right of way should be. Having some that burden back on the we throw it back on, on the taxpayer or something. I don't think that's what the current policy says, Chair. I believe it does. Now making it up though. First to a statutory process. Um Charlie, the board did make a reserve fund in the fall um, for surplus. So all monies that were reserved for um highway expenses are going to be put into a reserve fund for highway repairs that's where i get the name of funds but they're not that i remember didn't we do a reserve fund for that we did a paving reserve fund there for we have meeting day that that's the one i'm thinking about paving dollars but i don't there, think but i save any platform how can i stand correct <laughs> it says you'll do it according to the law so charlie's happy he just wants us to raise his taxes so we can spend money on class four roads you're going to raise my taxes, right? <laughs> but yeah, my but if you're going to raise it, Mark's going to donate $500 to pay my increased taxes for class four years. He told me that last week. Okay. Why don't you just scratch and die? Paul, oh, would you like to niceify Charlie's words? No, actually, he was pretty pretty nice. Right there. Pretty, yeah. For a change, yeah. Yeah. yeah, go figure. Uh, we did spend a lot of time talking about it, and the, the only problem that I really had, I think Duncan and all you guys did a nice job on this track. Um, I think the the only part is the money, and it says, you know, we intend to have the road model look at the and try to do maintenance arms, intend to do this as long as they have to make money away like from class two, class three, and the time, and so forth. But the problem is, there's always a budget, there's always a time, and that's sort of a recipe for nothing ever getting done. So if it adds to a response, whether it's a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars, fifteen hundred, whatever it is, put it in every year, maybe every three years you take on a half of project and there's money to actually do something. So I think that's something we we would advise really strongly consider. Jason and I have been working on you know, this was kind of part of more of what that conversation was, but just identifying the problem areas on class four roads. So when those erode, they become a we're responsible to fix it anything more than 12 inches, and b it's now expensive to erode. And we we met up on a reservoir road and just kind of use it as a model of like okay what what small what small incremental projects here could save us thousands of dollars at the next store right? right? And so all we're doing is just like taking in an idea. No one's really looked at these things for a few years. And just say, all right, where is the real erosion? Because that's going to turn into gull erosion at the next storm. And just kind of just getting an idea, getting in the back of your head. So like an example is on Mine Road, um, Jason went up before the July flood. Took the guys like half an hour. They put in a couple of water bars, didn't wash out. You know, that kind of idea. But if it's not in the back of your head, you can't take any action. And so this is a way where you can spend a little bit of time and a little bit of money and save thousands of dollars tomorrow. But we just... We have a lot of roads to check on, right? And so it's like it's in the water. And we're even talking about how to stockpile the our ditch, um, our ditch tailings that have higher quality material and how to stockpile maybe even some of the ends of the pit when it gets cleaned out. And so there is stuff. So how can we do how can we put this stuff to work with the least amount of money and the least amount of time and to the point that little bit of planning? Yeah, I think yeah. that's great. That's exactly why we recommended it. I think it's it's important to have the highway foreman. Doing that as part of the regular job, at least once a year, because yeah, it's it's a half hour. Yeah, a lot of times. Paul, do you feel like you have an accurate map of the class four roads? Because I was asking Duncan about this. Apparently, in '73, there was a mass throw off of class four roads at '68. Do you feel you have an accurate map of what we have in Johnson? I think we do because it was a um, 
OCPC and no, I, so the ag. I got it from the state. Yeah, there's Southern Agriculture. Stuff that I can pull off. Agency the state had the resources to the erosion. AOT is one. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's what, what we have. That's, that's, what, that's what, what you have, and that, and you feel that. And Eric, you were here in '73. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He might have been born and said it's like you look at like all right, 1967. Does that answer your question? All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Kim, thank you for waiting patiently. Just a, a quick question. Um, so class four roads do you have a line item in the budget? Is that yeah. a yes? They certainly do. Can we wait? Uh, wait. They don't now. Yes, they do. Have you looked at our town budget? Class four road main that's twenty five dollars. That's $2,500. Not a lot of money. Oh, okay. so actually, that is it, there's no reserve. There's actually, actually, there's actually yeah. another line item, I believe, that says class four road waiver. Wow. So my, uh, my math would be yeah. that the board could maybe at a different meeting because you're working on the policy here, but if the board could put that on their agenda to approve that the reserve funds for class four roads roll to the next year. Is that a possibility? I'm going to speak from my very limited experience here. I believe that the taxpayers at town meeting day need to approve a reserve fund. We can't vote to allocate anything to a reserve fund that doesn't exist. Okay, cool. We could recommend it at town meeting day. Right. Voters can tell us no. Is that um, an advisory thing or is that? I think it would be like the no, reserve fund that was we form one of every year. Yeah. <laughs> you know? One of those articles. So can that be like something that happens? That's like grassroots. Noted and continued. It doesn't just get lost. In I can put it on the notes of things for town meeting. In January, when we're all strung out, I'll go, oh crap. And <laughs> we do we do have a list that you know seems like a more often we're adding things to it than taking things away, yeah. but we, we do check back every once in a while on that list. So um so the specific request is potentially foreign reserve fund for cost portals. Okay. And I, you know a, a good first step, Kim, actually would be we do have those line items in the budget, but to my knowledge, they don't actually get used. So if the guys do, and part of the reason is they don't have a line on their timesheets for class four road maintenance. So <laughs> nothing ever gets put to those line items in the budget. A, a good first step would be to actually put all of the, you know, all of the materials and the labor that they put into class four highways in there. So then we could see how much we're actually spending on class four highways. And that would give us a much better idea of what we should be budgeting. Yeah, just inspecting the kind of styles. Yeah, it takes some time and energy. Well, look at so I, I do have a couple of comments. Thank you. I'm glad this is finally making it to the table. Um, I think most people know this has been a sort of a low priority thing. It's been bounced around for several years to the point Maybe four or five years ago, the select board actually asked the planning commission to do a do an audit and review, bring recommendations back to the board. And I do want to give a shout out to the planning commission. At that time, they put a lot of effort into it, um, had a lot of public input, um, went out and visited class four roads. So that I think the planning commission at the time did a really good job and presented a draft to the board. More. Priorities came in and it, it kind of got tabled a little bit. So I'm really glad this is coming coming back. So thank you for those who have brought it back to the surface. And I would like to say that I, by and large, I think this policy that's in front of you tonight is the meat and potatoes of it is really similar to what the planning commission came up with. So I think everybody really is on the same page. Uh, it's time to recognize putting an effort into maintaining class four roads is a public benefit and is economical compared to just ignoring them and then doing a major fix down the road. Undoubtedly, there's a little bit of catch up to get us back to the point where we can just do maintenance, but we'll get there. Um, so 
I am in support of the policy that is in front of you. Um, and I thank you guys for taking a low priority item and actually getting it up on the table for a, for a possible adoption. So I do support it as, as is written. One of the board's wishes. I have a quick question. I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask it immediately. Are who the gravel and sand and so forth still available to citizens if they want to do the work? Is that that's not part of the policy, but is that something that uh, still supports? Again, in my limited experience, who right. could answer? But I, that question came up when somebody that was on the select board for like 86 years or something was still here. <laughs> um, but I do believe that, that that practice is no longer. I do believe we gave some material to the class four role that was in our pit. So, who is in the or whatever the past practices were. I think it should be something five years. Three years. No wonder the town was going broke. Seven. <laughs> but, no, it's not a requirement. No, I don't have a requirement. I just wonder if that's still available to citizens. They could ask for anything. Well, one of, one of the issues actually, Paul, is that our pet right now is being operated by DLA Percy, and our personnel do not have mine safety and mine health and safety MSHA training. Um, so getting the gravel out of the pet used to be relatively easy because we could just go in and load somebody's dump truck. Uh, and that's no longer no, the case. It's still easy. MSHAW is not triggered if they use the grizzly screen. It does that if use the power screen for a fish. Not a rubber screen. They could drive equipment right in there. They could material. We're just at the final mile right now. Okay, but anyway, I don't mean to do that. Yeah, I'm going to follow this. Wait yeah, a minute. Sorry about that, Harold. Um, the, so the way I read the policy is that there's a movement of foot to recognize that there's maintenance required for the public to vote of these class four roads and that a review will be done. Um, and myself as a as a landowner or, or user of a class four road, I can request the highway department to do a review. And they now have some ability to evaluate what the need is and make some judgment as what it's going to take to either bring it into general permit compliance or put money up front, spend a little bit of money up front to prevent a bigger problem down the road. There's there's stuff, there's language in the policy that now allows that. It doesn't feel like there's so many hands tied as there, there were for the last many years. So, you know, whether there's X number of yards of gravel per person per year, I think it's less of an issue the way it's written. I think it's written so that it allows Whatever the need is can be evaluated and then judge, judgment can be made by the highway supervisor to come up with a plan that's appropriate for whatever section of road to be evaluated. I'd like to be an optimist. Well, I, you know, I, I, do, I do think that this is, you know, it's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. And I think this is, you know, I think we've turned a page over the whole, over the days of, you know, we can't do anything because you know we might not meet this or that or you know this uh, yeah so i do think this helps to to create a path forward to make improvements to some of these roads so i'm pleased that's why i'm making it to the table Mr. Chair. i'd like to ask everybody that's here that worked on that are they happy to speak up yep i'm concerned Thank you. i'm happy yeah <laughs> I'm glad that you guys have brought it to the table. Okay. With the reserve fund. Pardon me? With the reserve fund. Yes. With the reserve fund. <laughs> you know, it's funny, in all the time we talked about this in Class 4 Road, I don't think we ever talked about a, like a reserve fund for Class 4 Road. Did we oh, did yeah. It was in a proposal to okay. the and I don't, It's interesting that you mentioned that because you sent me that information. I don't remember seeing that in your, in your sort of. Bullets and red and colors. It might have been there. Yeah. Ryan crossed it out. 
What's that? Uh -huh. Ryan, Ryan crossed the ramp. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that's why I didn't see it. Okay. Uh, like for a motion, Mr. Chairman, to accept the policy. Uh, Duncan has one recommended change, so if we make the motion, I would recommend that will change. Change noted. Change noted. There's a motion on the floor to adopt with a recommended amendment. Do we need to have the you want the motion to say what the recommendation is? I think at some point we should have we could adopt the policy, but Tom can come back with a signature copy of the date of adoption okay. and all of that. And mention your little change. Okay. No, they, they want to hear what the change was. Somebody. Said. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so the the change is on section four. Uh, it's clerical. It's basically clerical. So section four B one at the uh, second to last sentence says C section three. Instead of that, it would be sec C number two below. Or are you making a motion? Mark? Yes. Donna, okay. give me clarity on that motion. You got it. Yeah, I've got it. Okay. Second. Seconded by Shane. Motion is second for the discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. I just threw that in there. Too, but, but I did clap. I mean, this has been a long time coming. So you can make that change, Tom. That's great. The signature page to be at our business meeting. I even had a worry before the end of the night. Date of adoption. I was on my road. Great to put in the public. Congratulations. Thanks for all the No, no, that was a very important question. So it's getting what it's all. Yeah, our next item. Wait, Mike, it's too confusing. Our yeah, next item on. is the industrial park update, and Tyler is here. Any chance you could come up a little closer? Yeah, I'll come right up. Get next to the owl here. And um, that's on the official agenda. Has reflect on the Simpson. Can I go there? Yeah. Is it seven? Or no, no, you didn't. Not on that. By the way, thank you. Thanks everybody that worked on that. You did an excellent. That's that's what it is. That's okay. Sorry, it took so long to approve it. Hi, Tyler. How are you going? We're waiting patiently. No worries. Hi, Tyler. Thanks for having us. Tyler is here, your man. Probably on the industrial part. And um, sweep us away. Yeah. And Luke Willie, is Luke on there still somewhere? He's on now. Yeah, I'm here. So Luke, Luke Willie's uh, my engineer has been doing a lot of a lot of legwork on the project. So uh, we requested to come here just to give an update and get any feedback. Um, we're kind of in a good kind of in a transition uh, point here of the project where we uh, cross off checked a lot of boxes and ready to kind of move forward uh, with the more of the design and permitting work, uh, having had those boxes checked off. Uh, one of the big things we've been working towards is trying to really nail down what the extra costs are uh, when we met, boy, when did we meet over at the college? Months ago. Months ago, right, there was, there was confusion about what the scope was, uh, you know, what some of the grant stuff was, and then what were some of the extra costs and the funding for that. And at that time, we said, well, we're going to focus on trying to check the boxes off and see what the actual costs are. So uh, we've had uh, success thus far in really getting those unknown extra fees and extra funds uh, reduced. So I'm just going to go down the list on that stuff. Uh, and this was originally based on the proposal uh, that was made part of the agreement a little over a year ago, where we had some exclusions and there was kind of some unknowns. And we started putting hypothetical or estimated costs against those. And uh, those, those added up quickly. So we're trying to get rid of those. Uh, the first is um, investigate upgrades to the existing utilities specific to the 
uh, water and wastewater. We, we met with the village and talked with the village. It does not seem, uh, it does not seem that we're going to have to do any extra engineering or design work as far as water supply and wastewater disposal. Um, it is likely that the pump station that we're going to connect to uh, down the hill is going to need an upgrade. Uh, and uh, and our assumption is that, that that's going to be part of like the village's work. Now, I know there's a whole other sewer conversation for the village, but the idea is that, you know, that pump is going to be able to handle what we're going to send to it. And if there's upgrades that are necessary, then that would be part of the infrastructure project by the village. But the town won't have to incur costs in order to design or do any additional engineering work. That was that was the unknown, right? So we met with the village and what we're going to be able to come up with as part of the scope of work for this project is is good. And then we will continue to work with the village to make sure that they can handle it from a pumping capacity. And if, again, if upgrades are necessary, then it has to be part of their infrastructure project. Uh, the other one was uh, potential design and engineering efforts and costs associated with the, uh, the intersection. So we met with VTrans, talked to VTrans about the project. We revisited the original um, traffic study a little bit. We talked about you know things that have changed, and we got a we got a soft yes from VTrans that you know everything looks good. That they don't expect there to be any intersection upgrades that have to happen. So like we don't have to spend money, for example, on a intersection detail for traffic lights or you know, spent $10,000 on a traffic engineer to design an intersection. So that's off the table. Um, the intersection is likely just going to be a standard intersection where a new, a new driveway or new road is going to come into the existing road. And, and that's that. Um, and that is pending the update to the traffic study. But knowing what we know about traffic since the original traffic study was done and trans experience with such things they don't foresee that traffic study update being a game changer with regard to uh what we're proposing in current conditions but they do want us to carry some money to update the traffic study they still need an updated traffic study <clears throat> so that's the that's the next one so uh melissa from ltpc was able to Coordinate and they got a, a, a quote for $16,000 to update the traffic study. So that's still a line, that's still a line item. Um, the next one is legal document preparation. Uh, there was an estimate uh, from LCPC of $15,000 for that. Uh, and so that's still a line item. And I can confirm that our municipal attorney has indicated that he thinks that is a sufficient number of people. $15,000? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> next was wetland delineation. We met with wetlands and confirmed we uh, we don't have wetlands to deal with. So that's good news. So we don't need to hire a wetland delineation. Also, uh, further down the list, we don't need to do any wetland uh, mitigation or permitting or impact fees. So that's off the list. Archaeological uh, survey we confirmed with the state, um, despite a little back and forth, that they're going to honor the original analysis and will not require uh, any any ar archaeological investigations or surveys. So that's another uh, strike off the list. Uh, we also had uh, ten thousand dollars lined up for a phase one environmental assessment. Uh, that was put there as kind of a placeholder when we got into the whole NEPA discussion. Uh, and I mean, we were about, you know, 95% plus confident that they're not gonna require a phase one, um, unless something comes up that is unknown to us. And there's something out there that causes a requirement for a environmental site assessment, like it dumped can of gasoline somewhere for, for some reason, then that should not be that should not be required. So we have a high level of confidence that ten thousand uh, dollars can be crossed out. Um, bid document and uh, public bid assistance. 
we have that in there for 5,000. Um, and that's likely on the high side, but we can leave that in there. It kind of will come down to the time that we get to that phase, how much support the town needs, um, or if the town can handle it, or the LCPC wants to step in and help out a little bit, or maybe there's grant money to take care of that somewhere else. So you can leave that as a line item. Uh, prime mag mitigation, uh, that's, that's strike down to zero. Uh, we're waiting for a confirmation back from the Department of Agriculture, but what we have sent them after some back and forth is that the the impacts are, are minimal and they don't trigger the need for mitigation. So basically, we got down after taking out steep slopes uh, and undeveloped areas and so on and so forth and taking out easements and playing the game of trying to figure out what is prime ag soil versus what's actually impacted. Uh, we we're able to get below one acre of total prime ag impacts, and that's the threshold. So uh, we we should not have prime ag mitigation fees. Um, the next one is deer wintering. Uh, so we there is deer wintering out there. We are in the buffer area, uh, but we talk um, there's talk about using the Prindle law uh, as mitigation to offset. So no fees, no actual. You know financial uh, costs there as far as mitigation, but we do have to mitigate with the offset of the of the land uh, being preserved as deer wintering. Okay, there's uh, I believe is it Luke? Is it two to one? Um, I don't know that there was actually a number. I think um, in 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 walking that land and talking with Noel Dodge, um, it was you know basically the the prindle law is plenty is is kind of um you know what what he had uh indicated to us i'm trying to blank on the deer which like for pine ag the type of soil is the dictator of the multiplier but for for deer winter i don't know if it's a flat or two to one or whatever but i, th I think it's based on qual quality to a certain extent i think there's yeah. a there's a, there's a, a scale based on their the state's assessment. We're talking about buffer area, you know, not actual yard area. So it, maybe that has an impact also. Uh, talked about it earlier, but the, there, there won't be any wetland uh, impact fees or permitting. So that goes to zero. Um, we still have the permitting fees at $10,000. So that remains. The last two items in the spreadsheet were uh, Construction layout of 7,000 and construction inspection and certifications of 5,000. And I was kind of cross referencing those back against uh, the original proposal and what I estimated for the exclusions. And I, I think those numbers are high. And I, I think it's like, like more of a combined like $6,000 for that. $7,000 for construction staking is really high. I mean, we're only staking out the infrastructure, which is the main road and the utility line. That that shouldn't take more than a, a couple of days max for a surveyor. Um, and then also construction inspection. There's, there's not a lot for us to inspect. It's going to be mostly the water line and sewer line and a couple of roadway inspections. So I think five thousand dollars is high there. So we could we could bring that number down also with confidence. Uh, so all day long, I get down to 42,000 for the total remaining additional costs as part of the project. Is that the 42? That's because you removed, you removed the 10 for phase one? Yeah. And so, yeah. That's a big help. You removed the traffic study. No, we got that. Did you remove? Oh, you cut. You cut the twelve thousand out of six. Yeah, and then you cut. And then the, oh, so we left the five thousand for the base documentation. Again, I I, yeah. I could I could likely go away or be be reduced, but that's where your sixteen thousand is. All right. Would you? We'll get an updated uh, spreadsheet maybe out tomorrow, Luke. 
would, would you think it would be prudent for us, even though you are fairly confident that you can get it down to 42? Would it be prudent for us to carry 50 in a budget? Understanding that we didn't need it. If that's not a big deal on their end to buffer that amount, then I'd say sure. But like I said, I, we have a pretty high confidence. I mean, the two big the, the two big ticket items are based on uh, the quote from the traffic study company and the fifteen thousand from the lawyer. Right, so that's the biggest chunk. If those if those two things are locked in, then you know you don't really need that much wiggle room. Well, even with the traffic study, if my understanding from talking to Melissa at LCPC is there's nothing cast in stone, and you know they would RSG would have to be actually higher. Yeah. But her initial thought was if LCPC does the traffic count at that location, that they might be able to reduce the 16 down to something like 12. Yeah. Um, so because maybe it's not one of our traffic counts. That, that would be one we would use as our LCP traffic count. Yeah. Do you get that email about traffic? And what they need. Uh, I did. I don't remember. Of course, the sheet doesn't really represent it. But are there other updates? We are rolling right into funding conversations, but Rob lovely highlighted. <laughs> well, um, the, the reason I brought this is this. Is, it's, so I'm going to transition to just like the project, right? Because the next step here is to like get this button, get this plan buttoned up and get the applications out the door. Um, and we've been, I don't want to say we've been slow to move on that because there's been other things going on and trying to figure out these other extra items. And then there's still kind of been the question of like some funding stuff, making sure we're spending money the correct way. But uh, as far as we're concerned, we're at a stage now where we, we're ready to get this done, get this, get the plans finalized and applications out the door. And so, what we wanted to make sure is that like everybody understood what the project is, what it looks like, and what it is we're going to get permits for. Uh, because if there's if there's any any uh, desires to change something, now is the time, right? Because um, all those other things we just talked about isn't aren't really aren't super dependent on the scope of the plans. Um, so if there have to be revisions, there can be revisions. Again, now is the time. So. Uh, we the, the original project that was we got put under contract for last spring to, to move forward with essentially a, a, re, a refresher of the plans that were de designed, you know, years ago. And so the design hasn't really changed. The biggest thing that's going to change on these plans is, is stormwater, just because the rules have been updated. And we have to revisit how stormwater is designed uh, and constructed on the project. But otherwise, this is the same layout. But it's been a long time, and and we've been haven't like been focused on this plan. I just, that's what I wanted to bring to the table, so that everybody can appreciate what I'm what we're looking at. And everybody here might just be like, "Yeah, yeah, we, we've already looked at it, and that's what we're moving forward." But I just wanted to, I just wanted to make it real, put it in front of you, in case, in case you want to have a discussion about it. But you know, we're we're proposing this road through here. Uh, one of the topics is that the way we're showing this is that essentially the road is going to be its own lot with the understanding that the road would get taken over by the town. And that's one of the questions we wanted to know was like, is that still the game plan? Um, there, the road is going to include the infrastructure, water line and sewer line, uh, utility lines and stormwater controls uh, in the form of swales. Um, we're going to have a a common lock for the stormwater system. Um, and then we're going to have this five residential lots. That's, uh, I think it was originally like lot one, and then we decided to break it up as five residential. So these are kind of small lots 0 0.78, 0 0.62, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So those would be residential lots. Um, lot two, a little over three acres. That's a nice lot with a pretty large usable area. The blue is uh, what we've determined as the building area. 
uh, on what kind of makes sense with the law. There's a little bit of flexibility there, uh, not a lot, because that comes into play with how we're determining impervious areas and also just uh, potential square footage of, of, of such. Um, lot three over here, two and a half. Lot four over three. Lot five here, 1.7. And lot six here at two point one, and uh, let me check. Actually, I take that back. I think lot, I think lot two actually includes the stormwater. Uh, it's just an easement for the stormwater. So the stormwater would actually be on lot. that lot with an easement associated with it. That's correct. And then you know, know what the me talking about stormwater just reminds me. Of another project, but are, are we not sending any storm water to that public private partnership with the co-op? Uh, I think the answer is, is at this time, the answer is no. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do what was proposed because you're going to have to handle it up here anyways. Luke, can you can you speak to that real quick? It's already in a pipe. Yeah. Yeah. So originally, um, uh, Hoyle Tanner um, had done some some preliminary work down at the um, at the co-op, um, and you know there there was kind of a con a conceptual stormwater design that um, that included some treatment for some of the impervious at the at the industrial park, um, and that that made a lot of sense at the time, and it, and it made sense to us as well. Um, you know, as we kind of got on board with this and, and you know, we started working on the co-op system kind of under that understanding. Um, but as we got into the kind of the details of that design and kind of fleshing that out and getting that application submitted um, for the co-op, it kind of became evident to us that it didn't really make sense to um, to try to 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 try to utilize that um to the to the extent that um that that conceptual design was was kind of counting on um so we think that there's you know there's there's adequate treatment up above um in order to kind of make that work without combining the stormwater for the two lots that was kind of the determination that we had made and that was only for water quality right it was part of the three acre rule well, that was part of the that's that's the, the part of the complication there is that um, the 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 co-op only um, requires water quality because that's a three acre site, whereas the industrial park is going to require the full, um, you know, full treatment standards. So combining the two, um, it, it's kind of it, it kind of doesn't make all that much sense you end up kind of over treating one side in order to get the other side when you think about it in terms of like quality and quantity the three acre rule is is a the goal of the three acre rule by the state is to treat quality so it's not like there's larger storm events smaller storm events you're getting that first inch of rainfall that's flushing off impervious surfaces and you're treating it uh, from a quality standpoint and then letting it letting it keep go as opposed to quantity where you're trying to have a bigger pond that can hold more water and retain it and slow down the speed of it. Um, we can get to, we can get into theory of this and whether whether that's a good thing or not. But uh, so the co-op is on the three acre list. They're not having to handle quantity. They're having to handle quality. Uh, this is going to have to do both. We have to do quality and quantity. So what basically saying is you're gonna have a stormwater system here regardless. And trying to get fancy and send some of it out doesn't really serve much of a purpose. The the concept was there, um, but after digging into it, it makes more sense just to keep it here and, and not mess. I can imagine getting it would have got a little messy on the paperwork side with the permits also, right, Luke? Yeah, uh, absolutely. There there, you know, there were a number of reasons why it was just it, it was just gonna be more hassle than it was than it was worth. Correct me if I'm wrong. We executed an actual easement with co-op, so, which would allow, not not required, but would allow that site access to that site for 
of gastronomic treatment. Um, I'm fine with it if we don't need to do it because if we had to do it, you'd have to get it from one side of the road to the other. Yeah. And that's not going to be cheap. Right. You have to sleep it. It's yeah. Just, and if it's saved, all that excavation would yeah. be cheaper to borrow. Well, yes. Well, Question asked and answered. Well, we're, well, again, th these stormwater plans are not, have not been updated. So we still have to visit it. Um, but the original, the original design had a, had a prop had a culvert going across from fifteen angles, just because there has to be an overflow mechanism from the pond to go somewhere, and there's no ditch swale system on the other side, unless we went all the way a little bit further south. This is where we look further east. Know that the plan is not to join into there anymore. Yeah, yeah, we had discussed that with um. With uh, John Barney. Okay. Yeah. John John is on on board. So they're gonna they were planning that swale down Western and then across the back of their parking lot. Yeah, yeah. And just yeah, and just just to be clear, the 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 stormwater will still go, um, you know, down it 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 goes down into the Jolly Lot, um, and that that's where the existing stormwater goes. It crosses under. Um, under 15 and goes into the jolly lot and and kind of goes into a closed pipe system that then goes across Westcombe Road and kind of into the co-op lot and then and then straight down kind of over the bank there and um, so there's there there's still as part of finalizing this stormwater program the stormwater treatment for the industrial park we have to we have to kind of figure out exactly how how that split is going to is going to happen there will need to be some kind of a you know of a a, a delineation there or split between that flow yeah i mean there was preliminary conversations about um kind of sharing the whole if you will on the stormwater side of the co-op so if we brought stormwater across um sharing the hole in the pipe out to where they're settling where for their stormwater loss being finished, that would save project costs for them and and this. We were kind of waiting on this amount. Um, is that has that was that discussed at all? Like, uh, I don't know that we got to like the financial aspects of it. Did you loop with that with uh, John Barney? One, one hole, you know, as many pipes as you need. It's a lot cheaper than digging it up twice. Yeah, I don't, I I don't believe so. Ba I mean, basically, what's happening is there's there's a there's a structure that will be that's proposed on the co-op property that is going to act basically as a as a split and an overflow so so part of the the kind of low flow storms will be diverted into their new chamber system right that's that's been designed and then anything above and beyond that Will will overflow basically straight down the bank and and where where it goes currently, um, kind of into the wetland down there, um, and and our flow is basically, um, you know, kind of uh, the the concept is that our flow will kind of bypass via that same kind of split system, and we have to we have to kind of work out the fine details of that, but but um, you know that that's kind of where we're at conceptually right now is that. The industrial park would would flow it flow onto the the co-op property because that's where the that's where the flow is currently right that's where that water is going now it goes on it goes through that through that culvert onto the vec property and then down into that wetland so we would be utilizing proposing that same we're not going to reroute that stormwater because that's where it's going now that's where it's going to go after this um but but it's not going to divert onto the VEC property and into their new system. And um, once we dive into this and get and get this updated and we can we can get you back and you know an update on how that all works. And and I think the the last week when we last talked with John we did, you know, we did mention that, you know, there were going to be some some details that needed to be worked out between these two systems and 
um, you know, that there may be some more kind of discussion and coordination on the on the fine details of how these two systems were going to interact. And so there, there may be some more kind of um, discussion there. Yeah, let's follow up on that with uh, John Varney and get an update to the uh, to the town loop. Uh, I have a question about the basic design as you described it. <clears throat> um, you described the first lot on the right as behind the, some of the old Bradley house as being um, residential. Which, which I'm pretty comfortable with. Um, but Eric can help me out here. Uh, when when we, way back when Sam Ruggiano was doing the engineering, there was two concepts. One was basically to make that lot residential units. And another concept was to make them commercial, small, small commercial lots. When you've been doing your updating, had you considered that to be residential versus commercial? Um, Luke, I believe that we've the whole time here been considering that to be residential lots, correct? Correct. And and in fact, we, we had some correspondence. The the planning commission actually reached out to us um with their kind of support of of wanting those to to be residential lots. Right. <laughs> this isn't the planning commission. This is this is the L C P C L C P C. Oh, LCPC, that planning commission? No, I, I I believe it was the town planning commission. Oh. Well, I, Charlie, I, we have the chair of the planning commission here, and he looks puzzled. Want me to put it in the <laughs> Yeah, please. So one of the members made a comment when we were doing the town plan that there's no housing in the new industrial park. And Act 250 permit had been issued without any residential units. So I called Roman and found out that no, there had never been a 250 permit and they were planning on doing, he told me at that time, six residential lots. We didn't tell them how much we want, although we did talk about it in writing the town plan. And we thought, I don't remember exactly the specifics, but we talked about residential on the Jewish property. We did talk about residential. We never made a recommendation about it, though. So. I don't remember if we made a recommendation or not, but I called my way to ask if there had ever been a, had there ever been a 250 permit, and B, if they were planning residential in their current application. And I think I emailed you, Duncan, to get moments to find out who was working on the action. You, you asked me who was working on it. Right. Yeah. And then I called my way to, yeah. to get that clarified. There had never been a 250 right here. So part of our NDRC grant, correct me if I'm wrong, it's child prediction. It is. And in and or so I think where you're going with this is do we need to check with NBRC? Are we going to lose the money? This project has come to a halt really quick. Time. Yeah. <laughs> like really fast. Yeah. Well, so, I'm whatever you're talking about. And NBR, a northern it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't take, I mean, it, the, the, the lots are, are just, you know, rectangles on paper. Right. And what makes them residential or commercial is saying as such in the application, right. like what the permits say. And making them residential is probably, uh, the the more conservative route because it's going to have higher water and wastewater flows and pretty much anything you put there commercially short fire restaurant. Fire restaurant yeah you just have more beds more gallons per day for water and sewer from a stormwater perspective we're going to assume a certain amount of impervious area for those lots anyways so it could be used one way or the other so we could go on the high side with our impervious area calculations for those uh, in the event that there's a commercial operation with a building and more parking as opposed to a house with a driveway. Um, we can certainly consider that, but at the end of the day, you do have to make a decision about how they are uh, submitted as part of the application. And I think what Evan is saying is we need to be, we need to check with Northern Board of Regional Planning Commission 
we have a grant for 50% of the estimated construction of this project to make sure that they are okay then with a, a mix of commercial residential. Okay. Um, I, you know, personally, I would be, Eric, let me tell you, I was, I was initially in favor of having residential in that lot. My theory at the time, this is 12, 13 years ago now, um, was that if you're going to develop, you know, uh, economic opportunity for people to have jobs, wouldn't it make sense to potentially have some housing available for those same factory workers or those same employees? Yeah. Yet. So I think that's a, that's become sort of a thing lately is that people, you know, planners think that's a good idea. Put your housing where your industry is going to be. I did something else. But anyway, um, I, to do it then. I just wanted to clarify that because I, I, while I would be in favor of having, you know, those be residential, residentially designated, I don't know how the rest of the board is. We do need to find out and clarify what we'll the board of regional planning commission matter that is going to be acceptable. What's up? No. No, Northern Gorgeous Regional is, uh, we can have Rambo reach out uh, to her. Um, I don't remember. There's a contact for the Vermont regions specifically for our grant. Uh, so I maybe mean, we should take the temperature of the board. Do, do, do people want to see this, the possibility of the development of some residential lots in there? Do you want to leave it strictly commercial? Whatever generates the most money. <laughs> to, to complicate it, you know, these these kind of look and feel like single family lots. But you know, is it are they is it a higher density? Is it, you know, a bigger lot to put in apartment buildings or something? Like right. and who who buys those and who does that work? And, yeah. You just sign yourself up to here until 10 o'clock. <laughs> And you know you could say I do not say, say you can talk about that later. You know any number of my facts. My question is when we went to the voters and for the to build this as the bond, what did we put out? To it? Did we put out residential or did we say it was a light industrial? Light industrial thing. So there was never nothing was mentioned about housing. About housing, so that might require another vote by. People in the town. We should stick with what. <laughs> Not that I don't like residential. We should stick with what we told the voters. Light industrial plan. I believe there's some public comment too. I'm actually glad to hear that this has come to the point of bringing it up as a, you know, the voters as a taxpayer. I want to see as many employment opportunities for people as possible, not residential. And that's what. I thought as a taxpayer, we were supported. I don't like the idea of residential in an opportunity to build a light industrial park. Sure. Um, just for clarification, because I remember looking at it before that there was uh, five lots in total. I might be wrong about, I might just be remembering incorrectly, but um, it looks like you have maybe shrunk some of the lots and you've managed to create five uh, you know, we can call them light industrial or whatever they end up being, and then an additional uh, space for residential. Is that correct, or am I remembering things? I thought initially there was six lots and then one lot. So they shut yeah. down. Yeah, there's six lots, and then lot one is split into five. Okay. Yeah, that lot always was at on the was yeah, lot, you know, the old plan like yeah. one A, one B. Right. Okay. Stick with the but, original plan. Daryl, right. When, when in Eric will remember, we the, the select board at the time really was looking at two potential um, plans one with the residential units, one as commercial units. And my recollection is the board decided to go all commercial. Do I have that right, yeah, Eric? I think you're right. Yeah. I remember it was initially having some discussions. If you weren't able to build some commercial, we'd be thinking residential. But that's when we put it before the voters it was with the uh, understanding. Yeah, I think part of the reason for that really was this 
block is one of the few parcels. There are probably other parcels in the town that could be developed for housing, but this is one of the few parcels that really is well suited for commercial development. Yeah. Stick with the original home. Charlie? My recollection of the, when it went to the voters at a meeting, that one of the selling points for the town to buy the land in the first place was to keep it from being developed. Because the tax revenue generated, Duncan, you know this better than I. The yeah. cost associated with residential, the cost of services from the government, is 125% of the revenue to be generated from residential taxes. And so from an economics, you know, from a town standpoint, it made sense that it not was a building. That was one of the seven Back to Shane's point that put in housing you probably had to get housing for it. I know it's my <laughs> You can give him. Ah, uh, does anybody the else? Dynamic duo, Shane. I didn't say it. Does anybody I mean, the, 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 biggest, the, the biggest, biggest impacts of the difference. I, I mean, it it, it, always, it always goes back to the permits, right? It's a stormwater permit, it's a water wastewater permit, and it's a actually it's a problem. stormwater perspective. It's an impervious area, so doesn't that doesn't matter as much. Water and sewer, you know, if you decided that. You can't sell these lots. You want to sell them the residential, then you theoretically could sell to somebody and say, "Go get more water sewer allocations, right?" Because you're going to be connected to the municipal water and sewer. So the connections are already going to be there for a lot. From an activity standpoint, you know you'd expect there to be a minor amendment uh, if you wanted to change that. I, I think it might have an impact on the overall feel, feel and character of it, and the, the premise of the activity permit itself. So. A little bit of an unknown there. If you went back to Act 250 and said, hey, we want to turn these five lots into residential lots. Maybe there could be a little bit of pushback on the on the at the Act 250 level, but maybe not at all. Um, so it's it's that that would be the only kind of maybe wild card that I, I think <laughs> see it being an issue, but it would likely require a permit amendment at the Act 250 level. <clears throat> if, if nothing else, then <clears throat> There's more residential trip ends from a traffic standpoint from residential than there is from commercial, typically, right? Um, I don't know about that. I think, I think it would depend on okay. what the commercial operation was. I don't know. Yeah, but it's done. Yeah. I mean, All right. Are there any other? Questions? Yeah, I guess it also depends on like how many how many units how many residential units you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If it was just single family versus. If you want to do something wrong, yeah. Are there any other specific questions for Tyler? We are running a, roughly an hour behind. It might, so not, that. might not be for Tyler, but I would appreciate clarification if um, NBRC would allow presidential permit. And does the board feel like we should go back to the voters before we do that? Or are you just asking for NBRC? I'm also going back to the voters. I also know that. Uh, Past select board can't bind our hands in any sort of way. Um, but I do, I, I am supportive of getting the uh, pulse of the voters and how they would feel about this. Um, when we do sell the lots, well, we, have, we have to have a special town meeting for voters. It's a problem, right? So this select board could just say we're selling the turn lot tomorrow. You guys go on to say over it. Or would we have to have a special meeting? So probably, I believe we would. Since there's a mechanism for something like predetermined by the voters, we're selling right. the lot. The voters don't. We don't. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, that was all quite creative. This has been done. I also, think things. I mean, you look at Morristown. They have, you know, the expanding industrial park. They don't have a special town meeting every time they sell a lot. Oh, it does it now? No, that's it's town, yeah. I don't. Think town, I don't. <laughs> Private equity is a little different. All right. Um, if there's nothing direct for Tyler, I have one. You would like to follow up on MBRC and send us an email to get that clarification. You want? Okay. So that follow up being up. We had Randall do that since he's been in touch with them already. Yeah, I already got the email. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have one, one other question, which I think you guys have answered, but I don't think anybody on the board has answered. So, um, the, the two, two related questions. One is how confident in, are you in your estimated construction costs? And you indicated with, right now your, your construction estimate said 10% contingency. You emailed me and said, you know, it's probably somewhere between 25 and 10 that we should be shooting for. No, I think that was a little. Well, it might have been a little. Yeah. Luke said 25 is high, but then the goal of this point. Luke, like, what's, Luke what, is the, what is the contingency percentage amount that we had in that cost estimate from last year? Do you remember? I, I believe we had 10% in there. I don't have it in front of me, but I, I, I believe we had 10%. Is that is that correct, Duncan? Yeah. Uh, what Luke was saying is, you know, in the, in the early stages of a project, you might add, you might go up to like 25% because you, you don't have like a set of plans to work from and you don't know exactly what the scope of work is and you think things might change. Uh, in our case, at this point, we have, we have the plans pretty well nailed down as far as infrastructure goes. Uh, so we have comp high level of confidence in that. To, to me, the to me the wild card is is unit pricing. I mean, like, you know, you get a quote from a contractor today, and they're only going to stand by it for thirty days. You know, there's been such volatility in the last few years because of COVID and with inflation that it's it's hard to hard to know what that contingency amount should be. You know, and it can it can go both ways. I mean, we we bumped it up last year, we and we updated our prices, but. That was a year ago, you know, and has inflation gone up or gone down? I'm not sure. It hasn't gone down. <laughs> it depends on which politician you talk to. Right. The are up there. And 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 you know, when is when is this actually going to come to fruition? You know, from a from a cost perspective of construction, you know. Well, we have a we have a hard stop. I'm being told of September 30th to come up with a commitment for the town's match. For the NBRC grant, including going out to bond or not going out to bond or sending the money back or whatever we do. Um, you know, I think that's a totally separate issue of whether or not he proceeds with submitting his Act 250 application because he's, you know, he's in contract to do that. We've got that money committed already. But I, I just was looking for a sort of a, if we go out to bond, we should be bonding for enough money to cover the costs. So I prefer personally to be somewhere between 10 and 25% in, in the contingency to make sure that we bonded for enough money. Yeah, really. To me, that just makes sense. If you want to go back to one Right. Well, the recommendation for Pat Ripley was the bond for the high amount, but I'll take out what he did. Is that how it works? Yes. Bond for more than one year. for more and for all these less. The owners will only be two select board members. Right. <laughs> no. Well, whatever you don't use can go back to immediately repay the you know, bond of revenge. Right. We need to move this thing forward, and I don't think we need to check into whether or not we can have residential or not for the permit. We think we ought to stick with the original plan and light industrial park. It's going to take time to do this. We don't have much time to think. Of. So I do not support checking into it. But shame, right up. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, no, my gosh, I think it's really like that or Apple. Mark wants a whole white duck. Mark wants to sell it now. On this specific question, if you tend to lean toward Shane or Mike, I would lean toward um, Shane. Duncan? I, I, like, I would like to know if that's an option. We may have to go back to the voters, which I think we probably would, but I'd like to know if that's an option. That takes time too going back to the voters. We're we have to get this done well, by September. Well, we keep fiddling this, around and fiddling around. This, it's not going to get done. This funding that we're going to talk about in 10 minutes probably has to still bear what, what that happens. We need to come up with 
$1.723 million. Wow. Or no. Yeah. So, some much smaller. Oh, uh, eight hundred much smaller part. Whatever. Where, which way are you leaning? Uh, I, I'm leaning towards in industrial commercial makes more sense than uh, residential primarily because that's how it's set. <laughs> Absolutely. So the temperature of the board, I'll, I'll say this Oops, real quickly, is that, you know, we, we, need to, we need to know whether it's commercial or residential in order to get applications out yeah. the door. So that is something that would happen sooner than later. I don't know if it wants to get a formal motion or not. Are you break two the members, time. Two members lean one way, two members lean the other. I'm supportive of commercial. Yeah. Oh, so do you want a formal motion? No. No, we're <laughs> moving forward with commercial sounds like that. What's the answer? I don't think it's bad information. That's what I call it. Uh, so the next part is the funding update. I don't know if we need you, Tyler, but the biggest part was the contingency. Yeah, I'm going to stick around and listen. You, you roundabout know. said you'd like us to carry more than 10%, but you didn't give us a number. I mean, if it, I mean, I guess the problem with me giving you the recommendation is I don't know what the implications really are or, or what the effort is. We're just, we're just trying to find funding. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if, if getting the funding is not the, not a problem, then yeah, put 25 percentage, right? To your point, 17 and a half. That's what he said. Be for, be for coffers. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the difference of me getting Maybe approval or not getting approval you. for a grant, you know, <laughs> then I don't, I don't think you need 25 percent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Thanks for coming. Yeah. Sure. All right. So um, you guys have got the spreadsheet in front of you that shows the the potential funding sources. Yeah. Uh, that has been spending five hundred thirty-nine thousand in ARPA uh, fees. It has us borrowing. 175,000 from our revolving loan fund. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop right there because today I got an email from Bob Pecker. I had sent him a copy of the guidance document on the revolving loan fund, and his opinion was he doesn't think it's as clear cut mm -hmm. as I do um, in terms of being able to borrow from our own revolving loan fund to build infrastructure. I am pretty clear. The document says. The town and village may borrow for infrastructure, and the town may have to loan up, up to zero percent interest or even negative interest um, to build infrastructure. So, um, but I just I'm going to put that out there as a red flag. I'll let you know that Randall and I have a meeting scheduled a week from Friday. We're going to the Vermont Community Development folks, who are the original source of the funds. To ask them if they see any red flags. So, so I think until we hear for sure from them, they probably should be pulling the trigger on going out the bond. I guess what I would ultimately ask the board is if timing is critical, would you be willing to authorize Randall and one other member of the board to start the process of the hunger? If, if we get an affirmative back from BCDP that we can borrow, we will buy. And if you don't, you just can raise the back of the five and Well, that's that's a really good question. What 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 would we do if if we can't borrow the 175 from our revolving loan fund? Would you guys support you know, adding 175,000 to the event potentially needed to go to bond? We're going to have to. Yeah. But I still think we could take it out of the remote and phone call. I, I think it's a little bit legitimate expense. I really do. You know, sometimes it's better I ask forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Not generally when we're talking about a lot of money, but I. Well, we're talking about somebody else's money. I'm right. asking for him to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it, it comes back to the question I haven't asked a couple of weeks ago is do we think that we're going to get the money? back at the end of the day when we sell these lots and I think the answer is a yes um, and you know that it might be you know something that we have to explain to the voters at town meeting day but I think I'm comfortable explaining that 
So let me continue with, I had a conversation today with Pat Ripley because the other thing that, that Bob Fletcher and the town attorney had said was in his opinion letter about the capacity or legal authority of the town to borrow a bond, he had indicated he was in Vermont Economic Development Authority as a bonding vehicle. So I talked to Bob, Bob said, you should really talk to somebody at VEDA. Um, and I did last Friday. And they basically said, we don't bond do loans, but we don't loan directly to a municipality. Or a bank. No, we'll, we'll loan to a duly authorized economic development entity. Could be the LEDC. It could be LEDC. Uh, I can tell you, when I worked for the town of Georgia, they had the Georgia Dairy Industrial Development Authority. Which had, uh, which is where, where Vermont Way was and the Lake Land and uh, Wyatt Nutritionals. So they must have run into the same issues because they created a nonprofit, a town, nonprofit economic development entity. In that case, Franklin County Industrial Development Court actually manages the fund for the local. Development agency. So, long story short, I talked with Pat Ripley today and I said, I don't think we have time for probably even in place to create our own economic development authority as a town. Uh, we've got an NBRC right. Yeah. Would, would you guys consider being the entity that would accept the loan? Um, and the reason I asked him that was because the person I talked to at Vita said, in other situations where industrial parks had NBRC grants in the amount of 50%, they had loaned the entire amount of the project to the economic development entity so that they didn't have their cash flow problem. They they would they could pay the bills, write that in the air, seek reimbursement through NBRC. And all of the money that came back as reimbursement through NBRC went to pay down the loan. So at the end of the day, they ended up with 50% of tax being involved, the 50% already paid off. So long, long story short, he basically said he would be willing to take, you know, some sort of proposal to their board. His preference would be that we continue along the path of funding it ourselves, and they would provide any all assistance they can. If, if the bond vote fails, he would still be willing to talk with us to help, you know, bridge loans or outright loans through LEDC. Uh, through but his basic suggestion was, go ahead with your bond process and try and come up with the funds. So raise the bond by the same time. Well, if if we yeah. cannot use that 175, you have you've got two choices. You can either send the money back, which in my mind means $3.8 million, you know, you're turning an investment. You can think it's a dumb company. Yes. Never mind. No. Um <laughs> you you're turning you're turning, you're taking an investment of $300,000 and turning it into $1.8 million worth of capacity. Oh, more than that. I think the article funding, which is our company also. So in reality, at 300 plus, the article money. Man, it's 861000 Is that including 75000 that's our township. Yeah. So you're taking that, which we can be using for other things, to turn that to 1.8. Uh, no, it's 1.8. John, okay. you said our attorney said he didn't think we could use that. Huh? No, I said he didn't think it was as simple as I was making it out to be. He didn't say we couldn't use it. Well, then what's the problem? Mm -hmm. I agree. They would generally, 
if our municipal attorney says, I don't think it is, I don't think it's involved. You know, opinions are you like you know what, so everybody's got one. Oh, I know. But we could get another attorney to give an opinion. They probably wouldn't charge more than an hour just to read that document and see what they have to say. That's what I would do. I'd get hold of another attorney well, and see what Duncan, they said. Duncan already said that Heaven Range will have a meeting with Vermont Community Development okay. Program. Which was so, the original source of those funds. Right. So but, if there's really going to be an issue or a problem, it's going to come from that. Okay. So yeah. then they, if they sign off on it, there's no problem. If they sign off on it, I'd say we make an application right away. Exactly. Can I make a suggestion just to prop sake of moving things forward for everybody? If you take 106 to 10 percent contingency, you had 175,000. Say we had a worst case scenario, we don't think we can't use it. That puts us at 426,000. That's right at 25% contingency, which is pretty accurate, right? So if we just bond for the 25% contingency, the 419, and then things fall, and then the revolving loan falls apart, worst case scenario, we scale the park back, but we're moving forward, we're at the September 30th debt. If say things go forward, we have that extra money, we pay off, we, we don't pay interest on the extra stuff we don't use, but the project goes forward no matter what. Yeah, you hear you guys. You know, it's just like a like that way. Like you guys can get the bond moving tomorrow. You can just we can just get going, right? So we'll make sure we have the money in hand. You might not need to bond for all that much, but it's better to ask for all of it than it is to so cut yourself short. You know? Perfect situation. Do it. You want to make a motion? Sure. What is it? Whatever he said. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. I, I can't. I what can't repeat said. everything he said. <laughs> what he said. Bond for 25% contingency. Mike's, yeah, Mike's then, motion was to, to, <laughs> Mike's motion was to authorize Duncan to work with Randall on starting the bonding process for an amount not to exceed four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's what it was. Four hundred and twenty or four hundred and twenty-six. It was four not to exceed four hundred and twenty thousand dollars from the Vermont Bond Bank. Right? Well, yeah. 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 That's what Mike's motion was. That's exactly what it was. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion. How much um when we take this 75 out of the designated surplus budget funds, how much will we have left in there? Well, that that was budgeted anyways. There's 75 plus 10, but that's gonna leave the grant match for their fund like nine thousand and change. I, I think I did the so basically the plundering is where is it really plundering? It's like, closer to 12. Okay. Is, is what it has anybody used that? Anybody just, asked? You just, to, I know, much. right? Yeah. Now, now we're going to have to ask. Anybody? We're going to have surplus. Is there still discussion on the motion and sign? Yeah. yeah. It was a clarifying question. Yeah. So yeah. Um, did that answer your question, Mark? Mm -hmm. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. We want to do a roll call. How do you vote? Aye. How do you vote? Aye. How do you vote? Aye. Yeah, I have it. Yeah. So clarifying points. You don't need a vote of the voters. You just need a public hearing to sell land. You just have to notice the public hearing. Right. Yeah, so that's uh, down the road thing. Yeah. Let's keep it on track. You're right. And we got. We don't have a notice again by September 30th, so if we we have to make sure about what's got to be commercial or confirmed residential, or we got to make sure we have cash in hand or the whole thing falls apart. Anyway, right? I believe the temperature of the board was taken. Tyler got it. The Act, right. the act 250 is going to go in as commercial. Yeah. Correct. And if uh, any of the people who buy lots need housing, they can call me. <laughs> or just link at the post office. Yeah. Don't show up. Don't <laughs> Okay, are we okay. are we good with the industrial park item? Let's hope so. All right, LCFRR hazard mitigation. I'm gonna move. Thank you. Item B along good there, good. Good. Uh, relatively quickly. Uh, a former select board chair and current moderator, Ooh. and other former select board chair in certain capacity, I believe, have offered services to help the town. And they would just also like our approval to represent the town in uh, flood mitigation efforts. <laughs> would you like to speak to that? We're representing the town. 
to the LCPC, and I believe Dave's on here. Right? Okay. Can I uh, interject here? Go ahead, Dave. Or <clears throat> I think we can, you know, you're running just a little over an hour over your schedule, and I think I can uh, uh, deal with this rather briefly. I think there's been a misunderstanding. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the two of us, Eric and I, got together several months ago trying to figure out what the, the town might do uh, when the next uh, flood happens, which it most surely will. And uh, in the process of those discussions, uh, we learned that uh, LCPC was uh, probably a, a very useful organization to get together with to talk about that. And we've done that. We've attended, I think, now three meetings that they have scheduled. Um, I think it would be uh, very helpful for some member of the select board to attend subsequent meetings uh, as they are scheduled. Uh, we ourselves do not intend to uh, act as an agent of or in lieu of the select board on any questions. What we're doing is we're simply trying to call to the board's attention certain things that uh, it should be aware of and certain deadlines that it should meet. Uh, and in, in particular, um, these meetings of the LCPC are one. Um, there is going to be a meeting uh, in a week or so at which FEMA, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, and other governmental agencies are going to be up at Johnson State talking about, you know, what you can get and how to get it. Uh, I think both Eric and I plan to be there. We certainly hope that someone from the select board will be there. There are two sessions, a morning and an afternoon. The morning, I think, applies to Johnson. Uh, I'm not sure that the uh, the afternoon does. Um, what uh, we would further like is to... Uh, our charge to ourselves is to deal with the question of the entire Lamoille River basin. Uh, not just what do we do in Johnson, but uh, what do we do in the towns upstream? What happens to the towns downstream? Uh, and one of our questions is, and I guess we'll have to be putting it to the people at, uh, at the event up at Johnson, is what kind of funding might we get to uh, enable us to, to work on that project? Uh, the, the second uh, question that uh, I think I should bring to your attention is that we, Eric and I, have made a suggestion to Carmelo real estate people uh, for a solution uh, to the flooding problem on that property, uh, which involves more than simply uh, painting waterproof on you know up to six feet from the, the present ground. And that is uh, an effort that is ongoing. And our question is, uh, is that something that uh, the town acting uh, through its connections with FEMA or the Army Corps of Engineers is something that we should uh, be pursuing with them? And then ultimately, what are all the things that Johnson qualifies for or might qualify for are being considered by the select board. And, and that's the, the service that we intended to provide, not to, to step into the shoes of someone or someone's uh, on the select board. Mr. Chairman, may I make a motion? Sure. I would move that we authorize Tom to sign three application letters in consultation with the board chair, yourself. And that we accept the volunteer efforts of Eric and Dave Williams to do, as Dave so eloquently put, um, attend meetings and report back to the board with suggestions and recommendations uh, for ongoing projects that we may apply for. Second. 
Motion and a second. Further discussion. Uh, just uh, with the caveat, we will do what we can. Yeah, I mean, as far as those flood meetings with LCPC go, I do think Johnson was very well represented. Uh, Duncan and myself were there for the first two, but they started scheduling them during select board meetings. So, which they not, which they they've recognized that they have they changed. Okay, change. uh, but just to maybe reiterate. If Dave didn't really touch on this, but the whole reason why this is before you now and there's so much urgency is that bucket of money of yeah, million or whatever it is, yeah, and the short runway 21st of June, a little less than a month away to have those pre you know, applications in. Um, and we have some thoughts of some things for to be looked at. But that's all it is. Thought at our level, it's got to come from a government entity like yourself, and you may, you know, get seek public input for other ideas. Uh, you know, there should be some things coming to me from LCPC on what we had to come up with. That's why I'm seeing the Scott uh, Jensen and I spoke last week about this, and just the pre-application doesn't confine you to a single task, but just kind of an off. An inclusive list of what was discussed so far, including you know agricultural fallow land up and down, um, lowering existing areas, flood cases, all things. Right? <laughs> he has that list in that meeting. Just kind of the application letter would just be not limiting, but actually be more inclusive. For him, that's kind of yeah, he sent us the pre-application information to you and myself on that five twenty. There's a motion and a second on the floor. The motion only mentioned Eric and Dave Williams, but the agenda also mentioned Beth Boyd. Did you want her to be in the Eric and Dave is good. Okay. Beth didn't volunteer. She wants to help, okay. but I don't, I don't think she wants to be in the minutes. Okay. <laughs> Um, Why not? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? And the ayes have it. Um, not rushing the select board here. Uh, the purchasing policy came out a little bit late, and I have not personally had a time to read it. Can we go into next next month's first session meeting? Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Good night, everyone. Uh, thank you. So there is a conversation about the uh, thank you, Bob. Listers and our local agreement. I believe Duncan has sent the board the spreadsheet. Uh, and I think this is just an update on how the contract to sign. It's just getting the temperature of the board. Is the board willing to accept Sheldon and ask what hours is preferred? Am I correct, Duncan? Yeah. Um, we have a meeting with this. Not this Friday, next Friday, uh, with the group representatives of the High Park, Berkshire, St. George. And the question is do we want to include Sheldon in the next week for local agreement? Um, so, if, you know, a temperature of the board, whether or not you're willing to accept them into the local you know, agreement would be, it's not necessary as an action item tonight, but it would be. Thank you. Nice to have a sense of you guys yeah. whether you're yeah. willing to do it. Yeah. I hear any downside? I can't see any. Board's feelings. No downside, no downside, Mike. You gotta do it. I would like to encourage them to sign on for eight hours. If this is our local agreement to get big enough, eventually we can just take over the whole state and yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know person. what? Yeah, yeah. One, one of the things that came out of our conversations was reappraisal. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and Hyde Park. I think you found that Hyde Park has a, a contract with memory for 2020. Yeah, you know what you told us? Uh, and, and the other, yes, as soon as they could get, and the other three members also had contracts with memory. And Terry Sabin was on the phone call. Nemrick is the only one that's bidding. 
I'm talking about it. Oh, yeah. Am I remembering correctly that Justin had said he, he had expressed some interest in the decision? Yeah, but he's, he's here. here. He needs you right. All right, to keep things moving, uh, we have two items for cemetery maintenance. I believe you've got temperature. I, I think I do. Uh, First item is the Grove Cemetery fence. I believe Tom has a little bit of an update on that. So I met with uh, Mr. Whitehill and uh, Jason, and we just kind of talked about where the property line was between the cemetery and his land. And I just said, hey, you know, we're going to put a fence around it. And oh, uh, we just kind of walked it. There were some stakes in the corners already and just kind of set just we're going to do some work. Um, he's going to remove some stuff that he acted through the cemetery. So they no longer have to do that. Turn the building around, just kind of prep the site. That way, a fence can go in. Uh, Jason thinks that him and his guys can do it together. There's $7,500 in the cemetery budget for cemetery maintenance. It's probably not going to get you before June 30th. So Jason wants to use that money to buy the fencing materials and put it in this spring under this year's budget if possible. So that way we can all touch. We'll use that money but not touch in the next year's cemetery maintenance budget. Because that leads into the long-term maintenance in the next conversation. But um so it looks like quick uh question is are you guys okay with a split rail in front and a pretty simple agricultural fence around the other three sides? Just kind of holding Property lines, or do you just want a fence in front, or how, how do you guys feel it should? What's a simple ag fence? Electric fence wire? Probably uh, either hard fence, like a woven wire, or a single strand just to mark property lines, just to prevent, you know, encroachment or whatever, but obviously visible for cedar post and minimal maintenance to be able to mow maintenance. The concern about hard fence is the trimming wall. Yeah. Well, well, this situation was a long time coming. Uh, this was actually talked about. I was on the board before. Let's blow that. Um, so now it's resolved, and so we need to make sure that uh, it has a good boundary and it's it stay there forever. So another board doesn't have to get involved in this kind of thing like again. Very positive meeting. And just how can we, you know, just I'm very happy it's resolved. I'd like to offer a possible alternative to fencing all four sides. Yep. Clearly, the side down Gary Whitehouse side needs to be fenced because that was the original issue. Clearly, the, I'm going to buy there today. The split reference along the front is in sad condition. That needs to be in place. I personally would be okay if we marked the other corners and got agreement that those were yep. the established property lines, but not necessarily fence it. Because candidly, those those two sides have stone walls yeah. Yeah. around them. So I don't I don't absolutely I agree think they have to be fence. It doesn't necessarily, as long as we have something that we will be able to fall back on exactly i think i think if we can get an agreement that gary or the owner will sign and record it then then we've got something did you hear what he said yep the agreement on the two sides that who's gonna sign it would be gary whitehill did well or well, leona no leona's just that side. yeah that, that you signed, so. yeah because the other property corner is a different one right? yeah I mean, if we're gonna do we want to just prepare the agreement for all sides and it's done. I don't I, I want it. Yeah, yeah. Also, I mean yeah, you're gonna do one good idea. Yeah. And then what kind of fence would you like for this? Like I can say you don't have to have it. Long as long as there's an agreement. agreement for the uh, corners. Well, I I wouldn't mind seeing one on Gary Whitehead's Yes, true. Yeah. The other two sides have a stone wall. The other two stone wall they just drop off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's very encouraging. I would I would encourage you when you demarcate those corners, get a GPS spot and put it in. Yeah, get a spot GPS, put it in the town records. So in case and I don't even post it, right? 
they're not going to sit here. You know, and you could even do that on um, the agreement that gets signed. Yeah, you could even do a, a mini map. Yeah, but you know, with your even you with your you phone, you can get a spot authorized um, for me to spend. Well, a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars to have those GPS coordinates made. You're going to need somebody to that'll do it on there. Is that accurate? It's uh, accurate to do a photo cell on the phone. Yeah, really. It's accurate to win a photo cell. I wouldn't trust it that much, but uh, anything underneath a thousand dollars, you don't need to do it. And I don't think like a handheld GPS goes for anywhere near that. Yeah, you might want my favorite. Oh, Jason, you know what, Jason? Okay, so Jason's gonna, you know, if Jason needs approval on fencing material, he's gonna come back to us first week of June. But fencing two sides, getting an agreement on yeah. on the other three. Put on the offense. Offense. Thank him also for what we did. Yeah. yeah. All right. B is more of a futuristic item. Uh, Long term maintenance. We can talk about it our next. Work session meeting if we want to. Um, this is about creating a long term maintenance plan for cemeteries because we're going to own them indefinitely and it's just nope. taking a future boards issue off their plate. Uh, maybe this would be a good homework item for board members to come back next month and say, you know, I want to look at hiring an inner local person, just having an employee to maintain, or they could say, they want to build a water park. <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah, it's like just a, an, elevate, an elevated one. Something elevated. Something elevated. You know. There might be somebody um, around town that's interested in cemeteries that might be willing to do it for us. Very well. My, so my question was, was for Duncan because I remember that you last year had done some maintenance on one of the cemeteries. Why? And um, well, so I mean, my, my question is like, a, do you know if other towns have the same issue? I would assume that they probably do. Of having a hard time finding people to do that maintenance, yeah. and and B, what exists out there for? You know, are, are there companies that do that already? And now, or are we looking for something that doesn't really exist? Uh, the answer is, to the best of my knowledge, <laughs> there are at least a couple of companies, even local, that the Mount Monument Company will do repair work. Right. Uh, cleaning work, um, resetting. Uh, you know they're going to be pricey. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that was a feature we had a plan. And so you, we broke the cemeteries out into quarters. So then every fifth mm -hmm. year, that cemetery went through, and there was like all the stones were fixed, all the stones were cleaned, and then we, so next year all the stones fit, and eventually caught up, right? And then we we used any unexpended funds to go towards a reserve fund or a pre-act fellow work capital fund. That was invested in the stock market. And then that, so that way, if there was a tree fell, you didn't have to raise money, but you use the unexpended funds. That's the plan. Um, and, yeah. and I think, you know, we could, yeah. we could talk about that at our work session meeting. But to answer your question, there, there are potentially people that could do it. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 not, it's not impossible, but, you know, well, I think Tom's idea is develop a plan um, and then we can move on and have. And Tom, do you have an idea of what the costs of that? I mean, what we could you, is it comparable for you to take what your yeah. parents and teach? I mean, I think it was we used two thousand dollars a year for stone maintenance, seven hundred fifty a year for cleaning, and oftentimes once you got caught up, there was a big one to get caught, caught up, right? Because it was years, ten mm -hmm. years of fun, fun for open stone. Mm -hmm. Once you're caught up, you don't spend that. You know, it's only four hundred dollars a stone to fix it. And hopefully, you don't have that a year. When teaching that, like tell you wild what, stone, thirty eight. 38 stones and 38 holes. Three cemeteries that we have, you know, there's there's a lot of bleeding stones, a lot yeah. of broken stones, and I have stones that need to be. Yeah, hold on. Evergreen, Evergreen, Evergreen. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. But Evergreen's in good shape, is that what you're saying? No, Evergreen needs work. I think but Whiting's in good shape. Half of waiting is in good shape. Like I know I got half of the plot needs a lot of work. Plot, all the stones are clean, Whiting Hill, all the stones are clean. 
Yeah, um, just on flaw. I don't want to say flaw. But... Oh, yeah. There's a lot of leaning stones on flaw. Leaning. And that's some broken stone. You repaired it? I repaired two of them here in the flaw for nothing. That's really cheap, right? That's, there. that's, yeah. that's <laughs> good, right there. Yeah, you're just been ignoring it. I'm going to go by here. I'm, okay, I'm so, so we have we have all work for the next work session meeting. I do like if you have any questions, you know, about that. Yeah. I knew this much about cemeteries. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but we're required to maintain. Yeah. The people generally in bad their sites repair. We we saw a plot the people. Yeah, there was sixty bucks a piece. No way. Well, you know, a cemetery like Royal uh, um, View, they have a professional care fund. You know, they have money enough in their, in their endowment to pay for the mowing. Yeah. So we're selling that box to cheap to do it. Well, you know, we've got a lot of them that are all filled out already, so there's no income coming in from the office. <laughs> <laughs> you know, way to yell and plot at close cemeteries. Yeah. They drop with a close cemetery. Yeah. So three out of four are close cemeteries. What do I the resources we know? This is way too much of a conversation piece, but what does the town do with our abandoned and place cemeteries? Is there ever a plan to bring them back? There's two of them that I can think of. One is up off my hill, and then one is off. Like right across from Park and Central Village. Yeah. That isn't technically a town cemetery, but isn't isn't there an agreement? There was discussion with an agreement. Well, it's a weird situation. It just the way the statute reads, if it's abandoned and three people who have an interest in a cemetery petition the town wow. to maintain it, then the town has to maintain it, right? Wow. Yeah, so it's I believe that there's a wait, wait. cemetery up on Emory Hill Road that if you go on Google Maps, it says something about town cemetery. Like, no, I really? didn't, didn't know about that. I have a cemetery in my mind. It's the water cemetery and it's in there. Relatives? Yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, 1810 was the last burial, and there's no obligation. It's probably a family cemetery. Yeah, it's like in the town record, but it's there's no obligation. That's a long term one. Yeah. yeah. But state statute said if you if a member of the family one came, two. you'd have to give them a right, you'd have to give them right of access. Yeah. Really? Well, it's funny because we're required to maintain cemeteries, but I believe that one off offline road, they just laid the stones down. And and that that's that's another one of those. Was it a family cemetery or was it a town cemetery? You would have that was to, kind of a family cemetery. Thank you. The family cemetery. You would have to ask. I see the number of ideas that I Red. Red. Well, the other class four on Highway 23. Next time you're out there, get your map out. Okay. Got it. So it must go. I got one. All right. Uh, okay, right I can run that one in. Good job. Uh, planning priorities meeting. This is a uh, heads up to the board. Hopefully, we'll have it in July when they're down. We good? That item? Yeah, able to put oh, it downstairs. Yeah, when everybody moves downstairs. So, we have two potential items. Uh, one is. Swing doesn't believe in swing. We've got enough stuff to take care of without adding a whole bunch more stuff. <laughs> one is with the board. Uh, Except the resignation letter provided by recreation coordinator. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Um, I don't know which executive session this is. I've been in placement. What are you going to do? Well, you mentioned a potential executive session. For employee review, well, so was an employee. Yeah, it was pertaining to the email. The, yeah, yeah. So the, the the part that's a little unclear to me is what's he actually deciding? 
of these uh, these less the smaller jobs, the health dog and inspection officer, he would like to demand. I'm aware of that. And, and he also wants to change maybe a couple of years ago. They came in and wanted to change to another yeah. incident rather than study. We talked at length about that, and the, the justification was at that time, um, it was not an even workload between the chair block. And right now, that workload between the two acting food dog officers is even and would be easier not to track hours and just do the job. So I'm sure they want to go back to the statement. It sounds like Dean needs to go back to the statement. I don't know about BJ. Yeah. yeah. I think whether we probably have to keep them on the same whatever the system either way, right? I mean, I would think it only be fair. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And it seems to me like that's more of a budget discussion yeah. topic than it is right now. But for now, we'll keep it and spend our time all out the region and then there's budget time. I want to revisit it, but I also want to hear from me, Jerry. If you don't agree that the stipend is the way to go, then what do we do? Another future board discussion. Yeah. Um, would the board be interested in delegating somebody to review the job description of the recreation coordinator and have something in the packet for our first meeting in June? Or something in front of the board for them to approve? Well, I think one one issue of concern that Tom has raised is should we post the position? And I think your comment your your point is do we post the position with the current job description? Yeah or no? Well say the same job description, you know, at the clause and every job description something to change. What's wrong with the current? This just needs review, I think. I think it's pretty clear that the position's new and the full understanding of what the role is versus what the role's written out at should just be crossed. Just make sure that the board is, board understands as the expectation is the same as the employee. When's it when's the date of the last job in three years ago? Two thousand nineteen. Five years ago. Did we actually find one that says that it was adopted by the board? I didn't. You have the copy. I thought there was a new one made when we went out. Yeah. I thought that paper something. Yeah, when we hired the the one that uh, lasted for a while, I thought there was one put together for that. Oh, that. Hmm? That's the one that we had. And I thought that was kind of built for that situation. I say it's been additions. To the responsibilities. Uh, I know. There is then the question, I think, if we're going to be looking at the uh, job description, is do we want there to be a change to the responsibilities, like to you know, incorporate what Casey was talking about, um, and maybe just get more clearly say this is what you're expected to do with this. The, Maybe the stuff that the volunteers, the, the committee members can be expected to do. But um, I think that's that some of the issue that we've had with the positions that, you know, there's a lot of volunteers who have been involved in the past who we still need them to be involved for certain aspects of it. But then, you know, some of them are looking at the, the paid person wondering why isn't that person doing this, you know? It's, uh, it's growing pains, right? right? It's like you went from a committee to a hired person, and there's that growing pains in between. And this is like the next step. And do you want it to be the hybrid committee rec director, or do you want it to be a rec director with a supporting committee? That's. And then you mentioned in the beginning about skate park, didn't you? Or was that on the like, committee? Well, you know, Casey and Casey had brought up how they 
they're sort of expecting that some of their administrative stuff will be handled by the rec coordinator. Did Duncan mention something about that? I, I did. My comment was it's a bit, it's time to it was kind of really more of a skate park committee. Is it time for them to mail them with the recreation committee? Okay. And they, not with the coordinator. Not necessarily the coordinator. I mean, I think the court if 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 the committee's mailed it in and I and the coordinator has to follow through. Right. I think they're already working with the coordinator. Yeah. It's not working with anybody that agrees. Which which is not necessarily right. in the current job description, but right. All I had to do is just add it. But we'll assist the skate park uh, from time to time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what I'd love to work with somebody on the board just to say, sit down, look at it. We know what went well. We know it didn't go well. Just make sure the job description, make sure the same things don't happen again. If we want to happen, make sure it's like going to happen the same way, right? You know who might be good to, uh, to bring in on that? He's no longer a board member, but that'd be Nat King. Yeah, you know, and I think he would be willing to help too. I mean, he really loves the program and he wants to try. And he might, his advice being in the position would be valuable. Yeah, I think that that would be Yeah, what that would do. Yeah, Lisa Cruz, would she be helpful? Maybe. How many people do we want to get involved? She resigned. So. As, as far as the select board member go, I'll volunteer to get him on the table and work with each other. Um, I know so that kind yeah. of, uh, so I, you know, my experience is from a little bit of a bigger place from St. Albans, but one thing that they have there is committees for every single sport that are not like official town appointed committees, but they're unofficial sub recreation subcommittees. Um, and, you know, maybe this is an opportunity to kind of look at something like that and shift around our, the way we are doing recreation. Yeah. But I think um, we do need to come up with some way to bolster the tech committee. Yeah. Because they're kind of available to operate in these days. Yeah. There's still a lot of rec going on. There's still a lot of rec going on. Yeah. And that yeah. might be yeah. like, you might be yeah. like, yeah. you know, yeah. if I'm interested in soccer, yeah. then give it that's ass about that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So to keep things on point, does the board want Shane and Tom to redo the job description? Have in front of us June first for posting. Do we want? That I make that a motion. Well, I was going to. Oh, you got to defer to their judgment. Well, we we you can you come back to us. Right? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. You can reject what we come back. We'll, with. we'll just sign something <laughs> first. Maybe we'll, we'll go back to the drawing board. Do that. Yeah. Well, the yeah. time is of the essence, really. So as long as we get it done. Okay. I mean, there's a motion. There's no seconds. What you doubt? No second. Motion a second. For the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. All those opposed. Thank you. And I don't think that um, precludes, you know, talking with that or, or anybody else. No, no, no. My goal would be to talk to as many of those people as possible and coming up with this because yeah. they've got more experience than everyone do. So yeah. I do believe that we reined it back in. We're only 37 minutes over, but we did add a couple items. We did all right. Your no meeting. executive session. No executive session. Executive session. <laughs> meeting adjourned. 9 37. 37.